Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium in Oshawa for the third and final day of the 2021 OCWA Men's Baseball Championships here on the OCWA live stream. My name is Brian Oliver. I'm with Jacob Ebbs, and we are getting set for the bronze medal game this morning here at Kinsman in a game between the Humber Hawks, the two-time defending OCWA champions, against the Seneca Sting. Both of these teams were able to stay alive yesterday in the uh, second day of the tournament. The Seneca Sting yesterday played the Humber Hawks. Oh, okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we're just getting some lineup changes here at the moment for, uh, for the Seneca Sting, and we'll, we'll pass those along to you in a few minutes. But the um, Humber Hawks are, the, as mentioned, the two-time defending OCAA champions. Uh, yesterday, they faced the same Seneca Sting in a game here at Kinsman and won the game by a score of 18 to five. And then Humber ended up advancing to the battle of the undefeated teams last night in the cold, cold air here at Kinsman. And they came up on the short end of a 7-5 decision to the St. Clair Saints. So the St. Clair Saints are resting this morning and will await the winner of this game in the gold medal showdown this afternoon St. Clair will play the winner of this upcoming game between Humber and Seneca. Seneca gets to this game after uh, that loss yesterday to Humber, 18-5. They came back late yesterday afternoon to eliminate the Durham Lords. A score of 2 to nothing. Seneca scoring two runs in the first inning of that game, and they managed to hold off the Durham Lords as the rest of the way and posted a 2 nothing victory. So that earns Seneca the right to play here in the final three. So Seneca will at the very least get a medal and the winner, the winner of this game, as we mentioned, will go on to the gold medal matchup with St. Clair. The loser of this game will be presented with the bronze medals as the number three team in the OCAA this year. The Humber Hawks mentioned won this championship in 2018 and in 2019. So they are looking for a three-peat, but in order to do that, they are going to have to beat Seneca here and then play St. Clair this afternoon and they will have to beat whoever wins this game is going to have to beat St. Clair twice it is a double knockout tournament you keep playing until you lose twice and St. Clair is undefeated right now so St. Clair is definitely in the driver's seat for the gold medal and looking to reclaim its first OCAA championship since 2017. So the lineups are being exchanged at home plate here at Kinsman Stadium and uh, we will see baseball in just a moment. The Seneca Sting are the home team for this game. They finished first place in the OCAA East this year with a record of nine and three, so they get final at bats in this game. The Humber Hawks are the visitors, and Humber only had a less than, well, less, they were on this field less than 12 hours ago, Jake, uh, playing against the St. Clair Saints, and Fell behind in that game, almost mounted the comeback, but uh, were turned aside 7-5, and now they have to regroup here. And we've been talking about it. Uh, Humber also had to play an elimination game back on Thursday against George Brown. They've had to use up a lot of their pitching, Jake. Yeah, you know what? It's uh, The old saying goes, you know, offense wins the games, pitching wins the championships. Humber has had to go to the absolute bottom of the barrel for pitching so far, and they have to play probably up to three games today. They'll have to win this game against Seneca, and they'll also have to beat St. Clair College twice this later this afternoon if they get to a third and final game. Going through the bullpen and all things of that nature, I don't think they have really any pitchers only left because, you know, on college rosters, you have, like, your infield players, and then you'll have your pitchers only who are just, you know, strictly pitchers. They're going to have to get into guys who potentially may be two-way players who are not, uh, you know, as well equipped to face such a strong team, such as Seneca, or even as, uh, you know, the, the juggernaut St. Clair Saints. St. Clair will be watching the outcome of this game and be ready to try and knock off the winner of this game for the gold medal this afternoon. The starting pitcher for the Humber Hawks will be Braden Taylor. Taylor did pitch yesterday in, this, in a game against between these two teams, and they uh, will send him back out on the mound today and hope to get as many innings as they can get from uh, get from him. Seneca will s send Dan Seguin, uh, the pitcher, uh, will start the game for Seneca. And we are lining up for the um, National Anthem right now, so we will uh, turn the mics off for a moment, and uh, here's the National Anthem.
Okay, so the opening ceremonies are done here at Kinsman Stadium, and the Seneca Sting are taking the field defensively for the first inning of this bronze medal game. This is an elimination game. The loser of this game gets the bronze medal. The winner will go on to the gold medal matchup against the St. Clair Saints this afternoon here at Kinsman Stadium. A couple late changes uh, just before the game uh, started here, just, as, uh, just before the national anthem, in fact, Jake, learning about an injury in the warm-up to one of the key players for the Sting. Yeah, uh, Batsy's going to be out of the game, and looks like in, uh, I guess in the warm I was speaking to one of the players a few moments ago, and during the warm-ups, it was a throwing injury, and it really kind of goes to show is that uh, even with proper preparation, the cold can do miserable things to the body. Everything is cold, everything is tight. It's all so much more difficult to get loose and prepare yourself for a game, and you know, you're so much more susceptible to injury. So Caleb Batty, who was scheduled to start in right field, will not be playing in this game and left fielder Dawson Peters Keene will move into right field into his position and that will move uh, Heath Gordon Moore into the lineup for the Seneca Sting and he will play in left field. For the Humber Hawks, last night we saw one of their key players, Cam Wilcox, fell off a pitch in the cold air here and uh, he had to leave the game and he is not in the lineup today and that was the, the the number four hitter in the lineup for Humber, so that's a big loss for them with Wilcox out. And really, Cam Wilcox has been uh, hot all weekend, or well, I mean, all series long in the tournament. He's done a really good job. It's uh, it was interesting to see him not in the lineup, but it really kind of goes to show that this is definitely kind of a considerable injury. I'm not really too sure if they're just going to kind of wait it out until hypothetically they move on to play the St. Clair Saints, but uh, hey, we'll see if they move on. Both teams. In deep into their, their pitching depth here in this bronze medal game. Dan Seguin will be the starting pitcher for Seneca. We've seen him play a lot of different positions for the Sting. He's a versatile player. He gets the, he gets the mound this morning and trying to propel the Seneca Sting into the gold medal matchup. And here we go. Humber Hawks ready to go. It'll be Steven now Rebecca, the center fielder, leading things off. Humber in the blue jerseys with the yellow numbers. As the first pitch hits now Rebecca in the arm in a cold morning. It's only three degrees right now. Now Rebecca is hit by a pitch to start the game. Yeah, you can kind of see him wince as he was walking down the first base. Uh, do not envy it. That hurts. Good morning. So one pitch and the Humber Hawks have a base runner at first here in the top of the first inning. And that brings up Dennis DeBanning. OCAA Player of the Year, the left fielder for the Humber Hawks. And fifth, as I say, fifth year player. This will be his swan song in a great OCAA career. This is his, this will be his last day in a Humber uniform. And he will be trying to help his team get into another gold medal showdown if he can. Just underway here, top of the first inning. Sagan's pitch to DeBanning is in there for a strike. DeBanning has been struggling all weekend long. I don't believe he has, I think he only has one or two hits the entire uh, weekend. He's been really cold at the plate, considering, you know, we see the numbers that he's got there. DeBanning's a fantastic player. Great power, great speed. We just really haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen him coming alive yet. Sagan so will check the runner. Now Rebecca back to first. He slides in there. He is safe. Now Rebecca was hit by a pitch a few moments ago. He is the lead base runner in the game, first base runner of the game for the Humber Hawks. Top of the first inning, Humber the visitors. Seneca in the black jerseys with the red sleeves. Runner goes on the pitch, it's low. Pit, they throw down to second base, it's not in time. Stolen base for now Rebecca. As Eric Baker, the catcher for Seneca, tried to release it, but the pitch was low and it just took that extra fraction of a second to release it and now Rebecca has a stolen base. Yeah, that was a really close play, you know, <laughs> right at the start of the game. Very close, but really Humber is not joking around. They want to get up. They want to take the lead, give their pitcher a little bit of support. So it's a 1-1 one -one pitch now to Dennis DeBanning. Now Rebecca at second. Pitch is taken off speed in there for a strike, one and two. You really have to expect, Brian, that because of the lack of pitching on Humber's side, I think head coach uh, Troy Black is really kind of driving it into his team that, hey, you know, we need to get up, we need to get runs. Hypothetically, if the pitchers aren't as, uh, aren't as fine, as perfect as they are. 
Here's the one-two pitch to DeBanning. And it is swung on and hit to third base. Jordan Blake comes up with it. He will throw on to first in time to record the out. Now Rebecca has to hold it second, one away. So that's a big defensive play there for the Sting to not only get the base runner or the batter uh, to Banning, uh, they also managed to keep now Rebecca from advancing from second to third with less than two out. Yeah, that was a pretty good play there. I was expecting a Narabeki to make a move, but uh, you know, with how easy it can get into a rundown, have him kind of caught out to dry, probably a better idea not to try it. Again, a game time temperature of three degrees. The one thing though is it's it's not windy right now, and uh, as long as the, the wind holds off a bit, that will not think make things colder than they already are. But it certainly is cold for all of these players this weekend here at the OCAA Championships. One out, and Justin Raspanti, the batter, will ground it to first base. A.J. Rowe is up with it and runs on to first to record the out. Two away. That brings now Rebecca to third now with two out. Well, not the uh, most ideal thing to happen on that play, but still, you know, a guy got a job done there. You always want to hit something to the right side if you want to move him over. Obviously, you'd like to do it with nobody out or one. Well, nobody out would be the best situation. But, uh, man, let's see if uh, this guy can clutch up. So it's Aiden Murphy now, the cleanup hitter, playing first base today. Normally, we would otherwise see Cam Wilcox in this position. Aiden Murphy was batting fifth most of the weekend. As he looks at ball one from Dan Sagan. Catching is Eric Baker for Seneca. First base is A.J. Rowe, Melvin Pujols at second, Logan Isaacs at shortstop, and Jordan Blake is the third base. Heath Gordon Moore in left, Gabe Bourgeois in center field, and Dawson Peters Keen is in right. Here's the 1 0. And it is low for a ball. 2 0 to Aiden Murphy. Humber batting here in the top of the first inning. They have a runner at third with two out. That's now Rebecca who reached after being hit on the first pitch of the game from Dan Sega. 2 0 to Aiden Murphy. Sega is ready. That ball is hit hard to left field. It's in there. Base hit. That's going to score a run. RBI single for Aiden Murphy, and it is 1-0 Humber. That was, uh, of the temperatures, a frozen rope. That ball was hit on a line just over, well, actually, probably about 10 feet over the third baseman said, Great piece of hitting. Solid base hit for Murphy, and it's an RBI, and puts Humber on the board here in the top of the first inning. It's 1-0, and that'll bring up Jacob Turner, the designated hitter. Again, Humber, two-time defending OCAA champions, looking to three-peat this year. They're going to have to do it the hard way. That ball is on the ground to between second and short, and it's a base hit. Melvin Pujols tried to get to it, but was not able to get the glove down, and it sneaks through to the outfield. It's another base hit. Turner is on, and now it's first and second with two out. Yeah, that ball had absolutely no chance of being caught by the infield. That was hit right back where it came from. Sometimes those ground balls go right to a defender, and sometimes they go right between them, and, and it's a tough play. So it uh, wasn't really... Uh, a tough, uh, really a, a bad pitch at all by Sagan. He got the ground ball he wanted, but it was right where Humber wanted it for a base hit. Yeah, just right up the middle, split the bed posts. Again, low and away from Sagan, but uh, turned it around. So that'll bring up David Boto, shortstop for the Hawks. Where's jersey number 12? He comes up here with two out and two on, and Humber already up. One nothing here in the top of the first inning of this bronze medal game. Yeah, this is exactly what they want. They want to get up early. They're being aggressive. Ball is in the dirt. Great block by Baker to make sure it doesn't get past him and it would have moved the base runners up. Now it's a 1-1 count. Humber looking for more here early on in this game. Hoping to punch a ticket to the gold medal game. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Seguin. Swung on a miss. Strike two. One ball and two strikes now to David Bodo. Clear there. He was, uh, he was not sitting on the changeup. You can see the defenders. Many of them just 
blowing some heat into their hands to try and keep their 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 throwing hands warm. Here's the one two. It is high. Two balls and two strikes now to Bodo. The old saying goes, deuce is wild, two on, two out, two two count. And two on. First and second for Humber, two away. Sagan is ready, he throws it very close. Bodo checked his swing and it is called a ball. Now the count is full, three and two. Three and two, two out. Runners are gonna be on the move here. You're gonna be expecting a fastball count no matter what. Opportunity for Humber here to add on to a one nothing lead, just underway. Sagan will deliver, the runners go. It is popped up and foul out of play. The catcher Tyrus Bath would bat next if Bodo is able to reach. Sagan wants a new baseball. And he will make the exchange and go back to the mound. Humber with runners at first and second, Aiden Murphy at second, Jacob Turner at first. David Bodo is the batter. Count is three and two. Runners will go again with the pitch. You'll see them move on your screen. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed, it's dropped. And it's recorded with a tag for the third out of the inning. So a strikeout to end it all here in the first inning as a Sagan gets out of a, a jam. But it is a run for Humber in the top of the first. They lead it one nothing. The Seneca Sting coming to bat. So in that first inning for Humber, one run on two hits. There was a hit batter, and that was now Rebecca, and he ended up coming around to score. And when you're playing in baseball, the pitcher always trying their best to not let that leadoff hitter get on, uh, whether it's by hit, but certainly not by a walk or hit by pitch. And that ended up costing uh, Seneca a run there in the first inning. Yeah, leadoff walks is one of the pitch and cardinal sins. Uh, you're always asking for trouble when you're doing something like that, and I mean it proves it proves costly here for Seneca. That being said, he was able Dan Sagan was able to limit it to one run. You know, really well done considering you know how strong the Humber offense can be. We've seen it this weekend. Seneca will be happy to have stranded two Hawks there in the top of the first inning. So Seneca coming to bat now in the bottom of the first. They will be facing Braden Taylor, who made only one appearance during the regular season on the mound for Humber. He did, though, pitch yesterday in Humber's 18-5 win against Seneca in the uh, first game yesterday. So uh, the Seneca Sting have seen him. He's seen them. There's a bit of familiarity there, I guess. And uh, But Taylor is looking to eat up some innings for his team here with a, a roster for Humber that they've had to use up a lot of pitching. Yeah, they have. They've, uh, as have I said in the pregame broadcast, it's, uh, they have gone down to the barrel. Bottom of the barrel kind of stuff going on here. Humber doesn't really have a whole lot going on. They are in conserve mode as they, uh, as I think they are probably the favorites to go ahead in this game here. Could coach is probably looking to say, hey, how can I save uh, some of my better guys to try and go again later on? You would think that though the Sting are thinking if they can get the lead in this game and get the bats going early and force force the Hawks to even go further into their into their bullpen, the Sting might have a chance to, to, to advance in this game. So we'll see Gabe Bourgeois lead things off here for the Sting. Center fielder, jersey number five, bat from the right side. The Humber defense looks like this. Braden Taylor is pitching Tyrus Bath, catching. First base is Aiden Murphy. Hudson Lockwood is at second. David Boto at short. Justin Raspati is the third baseman and in the outfield, it is Dennis DeBanning in left, Stephen Nowrabecki in center field, and Robert Champion in right. Braden Taylor is ready, so is Bourgeois. The first pitch is low and away, ball one. Seneca trailing here, one nothing. We're in the first inning. Seneca is the home team in this game. 1-0 pitch to Bourgeois is in there for a strike. One and one. 
Again, a three degree temperature here to start the game. We are expecting things to warm up though a little bit as the day goes on. This is as cold as it should be all day. As Bourgeois pops that one up to left field, Dennis to Banning in, or sorry, the shortstop will come and get it and backpedal to catch it as David Boto it did not go as deep as it first looked. And Boto, the shortstop, records it, the pop out, and it went away. Yeah, it looks like it might have gone caught up the wind at the very top there, but still very strong play there. So, Bourgeois is retired on three pitches with a pop out to short, and that'll bring up Logan Isaacs, the shortstop for Seneca. Humber leading at 1 0, bottom of the first inning here. Isaacs will take a strike from Taylor. Humber was able to get their first batter on. Seneca was not able to do so here in the bottom of the inning as Taylor's pitch bounces away one and one. The winner of this game will advance to the gold medal matchup against the St. Clair Saints this afternoon. 1-1 one, one pitch is on the ground. It is hit to the second baseman. Hudson Lockwood will come up with it, throw onto first, and just in time to get the out at first, two away. That one probably caused uh, a little more nerves than it should have there. <laughs> Lockwood playing at second base. He's played most of the, the weekend in right field, but he's moved into second base because Aiden Murphy, who typically plays second, has moved over to first, and he's on first base because Cam Wilcox is injured. So defensive shifts there, and sometimes you end up moving your defense around just a little bit. As the batter is Jordan Blake, third baseman, and he looks at ball one from Braden Taylor. The 1-0 pitch is high. Seneca looking for its first base runner of the game. Here's the 2-0 from Taylor, it's low, 3-0. The Hawks looking for a three up, three down inning here. 3-0 pitch is in there for strike one. Three one to Blake is hit to left field. If it's fair, it's going to be going maybe for extra bases. Goes into the corner and they will throw into second base. We're gonna see a close play, but it's a double as Jordan Blake dives in there, slides under the tag for a two out double and Seneca has a runner in scoring position with a nice hit. Yeah, that was a great piece of hitting right down line, 3-1, sat on the fastball and just drove it. I thought there might have been a play at second there, but um, apparently not. That ball was down the left field line, but well inside the line. So it's a two out double from, from Blake and it'll be the first baseman, A.J. Rowe here with a chance to get Seneca on the board and tie the score. First pitch is a ball, one and oh. Humber with two hits in the game so far, Seneca with one. Braden Taylor looks back at the runner at second and he's gonna really say hello to him and step off and <laughs> move for Jake Jordan Blake back to uh, second. No play on that though. One and no count here to AJ Rowe. Here's the pitch, foul back. You saw that high fastball light up his eyes. He had a pretty good rip at that. Yeah, yeah. Rowe is the cleanup hitter in the Seneca lineup. Count is a ball and a strike. 
two away here, bottom of the first inning. Humber up one nothing. Seneca with the tying run at second. Here's the one one, really high, two and one. Braden Taylor, the Humber pitcher, got two quick outs and then gave up a two out double to Jordan Blake. And time is called at the plate. AJ Rowe this season batted 333. 12 hits, led the team in runs with 13. Here's the 2 1. It is pop foul. And now the count is even two balls and two strikes. And once again, the deuces are wild. Blake will be looking to try and get a good jump on anything that's on the ground or gets to the outfield to try and score the tying run. See if he gets a sec good secondary lead here. Here's the 2-2 two -two to A.J. Rowe. It is hit on the ground to third base and they will throw it over to first and if it's, it's dropped at first base and coming home to score is Blake. Justin Rispanti threw that ball over to first base to Aiden Murphy. Murphy was not able to come up with it. The ball was just a little bit short. The runner is safe at first and the game is tied 1-1. I'm not really too sure what happened there. I just, uh, I thought that was going to be a piece of cake by uh, Justin Responti there. I don't know if it was a case of Responti just under throwing it a little bit or um, if it was the first baseman not able to come up with the, with the catch. There's a ball down the line. Base hit down into the corner. That will move the runners along as DeBanning will throw it into the infield. It is a two out double from Evan Farrell. And now the Sting have runners at second and third with two out. And that ignites the Seneca bench as they have two runners in scoring position now with two outs. So all of a sudden the Sting has the bats alive here in the bottom of the first inning. I think Farrell's been one of the top hitters this entire tournament. He's been able to spark the Seneca offense multiple times. He's been a real thorn in all teams' sides. Well, Farrell had the, the big hit yesterday in the game against the Durham Lords. As the batter will be Melvin Pujols, the second baseman. He comes up now with runners second and third with two out. Seneca with the tying run already across here. It's a 1-1 ball game. And now Seneca looking to take the lead. Melvin Pujols, second baseman, steps out for a moment. I mentioned Evan Farrell who just hit that double, the second double of the inning for Seneca. Hit the, hit, hit, had the big hit yesterday for Seneca in the 2-0 win against Durham. Fouled away at the plate. The count goes to 1-1. One one. Clutch hitting will always always uh, play a big role in, in, in an elimination game like this. That ball was just perfectly placed right over the third base bag. Yeah, it really was. You, I don't think you really could have placed it any better. Braden Taylor is ready. The pitch swung on a miss. Strike two. So now Taylor is ahead of Melvin Pujols and trying to stop this Seneca rally here. They have rallied for one to tie the game in the bottom of the first. Runners at second and third two away. The one two to Pujols is low. Two balls and two strikes. We'll do it again. Here's the 2-2. On the ground to second base. Hudson Lockwood has got it. He bobbles it for a moment. Throws on to first and recovers just in time to record the out at first and end the inning. Almost another run there for Seneca, but the Humber defense comes up with the final out. So we've played an inning, and we've seen a lot of, a lot of stuff happen already here in one inning. One inning in the books, and it is a 1-1 tie, the Humber Hawks and the Seneca Sting.
So recapping the Sting's first inning in the bottom of the first one run on two hits. There were two runners left, and there was an error that allowed that first run to come around from second base. Jordan Blake getting the first run for Seneca. But the Seneca Sting did leave a couple of runners on base, and like they did yesterday against the Durham Lords, uh, had they left 13 base runners on during that game yesterday. So they leave two runners on here in the first inning. And uh, like we're also seeing again, uh, Jake, the, the effects of the cold weather just making it a little bit tougher for the defenders uh, to just, everything's just a little bit off when it's so cold. The hand gets a little, uh, it's just hard to keep the body fresh and, and, uh, and you can feel a little bit stiff and little things like that are going to happen to cause runs to come in. Yeah, you're totally right, Brian. <clears throat> and some stuff like this, it's, uh, these guys are all playing summer ball generally as well. You know, the temperatures are in the high 20s and the 30s. Uh, having something like this where in the single digits and it's so cold, they maybe play two, three games like that all year long. So you really can never get used to it or develop a sense of how you're going to go about it. Because if you're only playing two or three games in that condition every year, there's no way you can ever adjust properly to it. So each team with a run in the first inning in this elimination game, loser of this game will be presented with the OCAA bronze medals and the winner will advance to play this afternoon in the gold medal matchup against the St. Clair Saints. The St. Clair Saints are undefeated and would need to lose twice today in order to not capture the gold medal. The St. Clair Saints have not won the OCAA championship since 2017. The Humber Hawks playing here are the defending champions. And in fact, they are the two-time defending champions and looking to give themselves a chance to earn a third consecutive gold medal. They are in a 1-1 tie here in the second inning. The batter is the catcher, Tyrus Bath. Bath last night came out of the game after taking a couple of foul balls uh, off uh, during the game against St. Clair. He's recovered nicely as he pops one up in the infield. And third baseman, Jordan Blake, will take that one for the out as that ball was sky high in the infield. And Blake gets under it and records the out, uh, one pitch, one out. Yeah, he was able to, tr <clears throat> pardon me, track that really nicely. He was under that the entire time. Usually when something is hit that high, you're going to see the infielders kind of like juggle between each other. Who's going to take it? And sometimes it usually ends up costing them dropping in. And, of course, uh, the, the wind is fairly calm right now, so it didn't move the ball around too much high in the air. The batter is Robert Champion, the right fielder. Jersey number eight, B bats from the left side. This is his first plate appearance of the game. One away here in the second inning for Humber in a 1-1 game. Looks at a ball. Fouls that one away and the count goes to one and two against Dan Sagan, the starting pitcher for the Seneca Sting. Last night in the game between St. Clair and Humber, Champion came on during the middle of the game as he takes a look at ball two, very close, two balls and two strikes. Champion came on in that game after Cam Wilcox, the first baseman for Humber, was injured on foul ball uh, when he was batting. Yeah, a really tough circumstances for the Humber team, losing their first baseman and their number four hitter. Swing and a miss from Champion. He is down on strikes. Second strike out of the game for Dan Sagan. And quickly two up, two down for Humber here in the top of the second. And that'll bring up Hudson Lockwood, this the uh, second baseman. Seneca looking to keep Humber maybe with a three up, three down inning here in the second. Lockwood is the number nine hitter. If he reaches, Stephen now Rebecca would come up as they turn the lineup over. Ball is on the ground to second base. Looks like a fairly routine play. They will flip it on to first for the out. One pitch there and that is three up three down for Humber in the second inning on just seven pitches for Dan Sagan. So that's exactly uh, what you want to do to conserve your pitching. If you can have a seven pitch inning that's great for Seneca. 
and they will come off the field and come up to the to plate in a moment in the bottom of the second inning in a 1-1 tie here at Kinsman Stadium in the bronze medal game of the 2021 OCAA Men's Baseball Championship. One thing we shouldn't overlook, uh, but Brian Oliver here, by the way, uh, with Jacob Ebbs here at uh, Kinsman Stadium as we go to the bottom of the second inning. And, uh, Jake, one thing we shouldn't overlook is the fact that during the regular season when these two teams played, Seneca won both of those games against Humber by scores of 5-2 to two and 6 to nothing. Uh, that was back on October 2nd. So they swept the doubleheader against, against Humber, and that was at Connerville Park in Etobicoke. Now, I know yesterday Humber turned the tables and won a big... 18-5 decision here in uh, the first game of the tournament or first game of second day yesterday. Humber had the upper hand yesterday, but Seneca does have uh, some record of success this year, obviously, against Humber, and uh, they're they're in good shape right now in a 1-1 game here in the second inning. Yeah, you know what? Thinking about it now is that during that weekend series, <clears throat> you're seeing best of Humber's arms. You're seeing Dalton Brownlee. You're seeing the best of the bullpen. You're probably seeing, seeing Shane O'Keefe as well and they were still able to pull victories away. There is nowhere near that level of pitching right now, with all due respect to the guy on the bump. And still, as long as Seneca is able to quiet the offense, we might see this go down as a Seneca win. The leadoff hitter will be the catcher, Eric Baker. And he looks at ball one from Braden Taylor. Each team with the run in the first inning, Humber, was three up, three down in the top of the second. It'll be the seven, eight, and nine hitters for Seneca here to start the second inning as Baker looks at ball two. Seneca with one run on two hits back in the first inning. Couple of doubles by Jordan Blake and Evan Farrell. The 2-0 pitch is in there for a strike, two and one. You can feel that Seneca's confidence is is there and they, they they feel that they can knock off the the two-time defending champions here this morning the 2-1 pitch is fouled away comes to the right side yeah there really is a newfound uh confidence i think with the seneca sting seneca sting just uh right beside us we're on the uh, first base side just beside the seneca sting dugout and we can hear them they are loud they are lively i think uh they really believe they can take this here's the 2-2 pitch swung on a miss strike three that is the first Strikeout of the game for Humber's starter, Braden Taylor. One up and one down, and that will bring up Dawson Peters Keene will be the batter. He is the right fielder. Originally scheduled to start in left in this game, but now playing in right field as Caleb Batty was injured during the warmups. He hits that ball past second base. It's a base hit. Third hit of the game for Seneca. And it's a one-out single. As Peters Keene puts that between first base and second. And that'll bring up Heath Gordon Moore. Playing left field in this game. Was not originally in the lineup, but as we mentioned, uh, Caleb Batty was injured uh, th throwing during the warm-ups. And Gordon Moore is in the lineup now, and he's in the number nine spot in the in the lineup. And he comes up here with a runner on first and one out. He looks at strike one from Braden Taylor. 1-1 one, one tie here in the bottom of the second inning, Seneca and Humber. Peters Keene, the runner, at... First, and he dives back in as Taylor checks him back. First baseman Aiden Murphy tosses it back to his pitcher. Heath Gordon Moore wears jersey number eight. He bats from the left side. And looking to turn the lineup over here for Seneca as he fouls away. He takes a big cut, but he's down now 0 and 2. 
to Braden Taylor. One out here in the bottom of the second. Humber looking for the double play. Taylor will take a look over his shoulder at the runner. The runner goes. They will throw it down to second and it bounces away. And it's a stolen base for Peters Keene as David Bodog was not able to catch the ball as it bounced in front of him. So now a runner in scoring position for Seneca with one away. Yeah, the runner there did not really get a, such a good start, but still able, able to make it in to play. So the Sting aggressive on the base pass here in the bottom of the second inning, and now they have the go-ahead run at second with one away. And waiting on deck is leadoff hitter Gabe Bourgeois. Count is one and two. Very high. That just flew right out of Braden Taylor's hand and knew that it wasn't going to come back down. Two balls and two strikes now as Gordon Moore manages to work the count even. Trying to bring home the go-ahead run here for Seneca. The 2-2 pitch swung on, I missed. Great pitch there from Braden Taylor for his second strikeout of the inning and of the game. And there are two out. So Gabe Bourgeois will come up now for Seneca with two away, the go-ahead run at second base. In Dawson Peters Keene, who just stole second a few moments ago. Bourgeois is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He popped out to short. Braden Taylor is ready. Here's the pitch. It is taken for strike one. Bourgeois led Seneca this year with a 400 batting average and a 580 on base percentage and led the team in hits with 14. Count is 0 and 1. Taylor's pitch is low and a nice block by Tyrus Bath there. One and one. Yeah, it really did. <clears throat> you need the you need a quality catcher and in games like this today, ones who are absolutely a brick wall back there, because if not, it'll be free reign for the base runners. As you can see on your screen, it's a very big backstop here at Kinsman Stadium. So anything that gets by the catcher goes back almost 20, 25 feet. Here's the one one. It is popped up again. Might be a play for Tyrus Bath here in foul territory. He's got it, and the inning is over. Great play by the catcher to end the inning, and Bourgeois is out on a pop-up for the second time in the game, and Seneca leaves the go-ahead run at second. Two in the books here. It is Humber one, Seneca one. So in that second inning, no runs on one hit for the Sting. And they leave another base runner. So now they've left three base runners on after two innings. Seems to be the tail of the tape here. This weekend, just an insane number of runners left on base. For Humber here in the third inning as they... Dodge a bit of a bullet there in the Seneca second. They will have their one, two, three hitters coming up here. Stephen Nabrabecki, Dennis DeBanning, and Justin Raspanti. Humber last night, their, their game against the St. Clair Saints ended just before midnight. I think it was about 11.45, maybe 11.50 when that game ended last night in a very cold game here. Humber was well down in that game and they started rallying uh, late on and got it to 7-5 and had chances to tie the game, uh, but uh, were turned away by St. Clair at, at the end. So, uh, but they didn't have, they didn't have as, as much time to rest between games, if you will, because Seneca was uh, off the field here last night around after 7.30 after beating um, the Durham Lords and knocking them out of the tournament. So Seneca's had a little bit more rest coming into this game. And, of course, Humber played the extra game on Thursday. Yeah, it's uh, 
Humber is uh, truly being battle tested right now. They are uh, really being thrown to the gridiron. And it was an amazing year for Humber. From offensive numbers, all kinds of records set for the Hawks. A very proud program with a great tradition of, of success. Two-time defending OCAA champions. And we'll see Noah Becky lay a bunt down here, and I think he's going to make it. No play for Sagan as he tried to come up with it. Slipped just a little bit. The ball bounced off of his glove, and now Rebecca with a heads-up bunt getting it down on the grass, and he is on with a leadoff single. We saw him try that, uh, Narabeki, uh, that uh, drag bun. We saw him try to do it last night as well. Didn't work out, but we were both kind of confused there. It's like, you have the batting champion right here, one of the <laughs> best hitters in the league, putting down a bun? Well, that also just shows how much of a team player he is as well, yeah. doing whatever he can to help his team. And he, there with the very alert bunt, gets on bases. Dennis DeBanning hits it to short. Could be two. They throw to second for one. On to first for a double play. Dennis DeBanning grounds into a 6-4-3 double play. And now Rebecca is erased two away here. Huge defensive play there for the Sting. Well, DeBanning uh, certainly caught a barrel there. He hit that one really hard. Just uh, unfortunately to his uh, discredit right at him. Logan Isaacs, the shortstop for Seneca, made a great play there to ensure the ball got into his glove. Make sure you get that ball. You know, you're thinking double play. You can feel it coming off the bat that you got a shot at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made a good play to, uh, to scoop it up, throw it over to Melvin Pujols, who turned it. And it's a quick double play. Two out here for Humber in the top of the third. The batter is Justin Raspanti. Yeah, you're totally right. It's you know, On a double play like that, you really kind of got to mentally take it one thing at a time. Yeah, you're right. You can't make the, you can't make the play if you don't make the first play. The, the second play doesn't happen. So, great job there by the Seneca defense, and uh, that lifts them up big time here. As there are now two out, nobody on for Respanti. The count is two and zero. Oh. As Sega hits that one on the ground to second base, Pujols has got it, and he will lob it over to first easily for the out. The inning is over, and Seneca comes off the field again with their defense turning away Humber. Two and a half gone here at Kinsman Stadium. It is a 1-1 tie, Seneca and Humber. So a big lift there for Seneca in the third inning for Humber as they turn a big double play and take down two of the OCAA's best players at the same time, Stephen Navarbecki and Dennis DeBanning. Yeah, you got a, <laughs> I don't really know how much of a tougher one, two, three guys you got than uh, uh, Navarbecki as well as uh, DeBanning. Two very strong players and uh, like I said, like Dennis who has been kind of, he's been cold all, uh, all tournament. He hit that on a rope. He hit that one, probably the hardest hit ball I've seen him hit. Yes. All weekend. No question. But uh, that's uh, that's probably the unfortunate thing. Like you can hit something super soft and just off the end of the bat, and it can drop in for a hit. And sometimes you can hit a ball, you can hit it on the screws, and you, you'll find you just find someone. That's uh, that's the nature of the game. The sting will come up here in the bottom of the third inning in a one-one tie. It'll be the two-three-four hitters. So the heart of the order coming up here now for Seneca in a one-one game. One run on three hits for Seneca so far. For Humber, they have one run on two hits, and there has been one error. Now, yesterday, Humber put 18 runs up against Seneca. And uh, if you just looked at the scores alone yesterday and you think, okay, well, Humber scored 18 runs yesterday, they should be able to do easily again here this morning. But uh, in the early going, Humber with only one run and two hits. So it's a different story so far in this game as Humber's offense has not caught fire yet. And Seneca will try and take the lead here in the bottom of the third inning. And they will send up Logan Isaacs, who's 0 for 1 in the ballgame, grounded to second. 
back in the first inning. Braden Taylor remains on the mound for Humber. Ball is hit to first base. Ada Murphy has got it. He easily jogs to first. One pitch, one out. Good play there from Humber defensively. And that'll bring up Jordan Blake. And Jordan Blake, back in the first inning, with two out, hit a double to left field and later scored on a double by Evan Farrell. And that was the first run of the ball game for Seneca. So Blake is one for one with a double and he looks at ball one from Braden Taylor. Blake, the number three hitter in the lineup. Here's the 1-0. -oh. Wanted to take a cut at it, holds up. It's a strike, one and one. He probably wants that one back. Here's the 1-1 one -one from Taylor. It is hit to center field. Might be trouble. The infield outfielders are coming in, and it drops in in front of the right fielder. Robert Champion and Stephen Nowrebecki were deep, probably respecting the power of Blake there a bit, and that ball just dropped in in front of them. So it's a, a, a one-out single for Blake, and Blake is two for two in the ball game. So now a base runner, the go-ahead run for Seneca at first. One away here in the bottom of the third inning, Seneca the home team, and it'll be A.J. Rowe, the first baseman. And he looks at a ball outside. In the first inning, Rowe hit a ball to third base and reached when the ball was dropped at first base, and that ended up extending the inning and then Farrell was able to come up with a two-out double to get Seneca's first run of the ball game. So Rowe will be looking to get on again. He looks at ball two. Jordan Blake, the runner at first this year, had four stolen bases. He was, though, caught three times. Seneca looking for... A hit here as the 2-0 pitch is fouled away, 2-1. and one. Bottom of the third inning, 1-1 one, one tie, Seneca and Humber. Humber won yesterday, 18-5 between these two teams. But, but it's a 1-1 one, one nail-biter so far here at Kinsman Stadium this morning. Braden Taylor... Checks the runner. Now he throws in high for ball three. Three and one. If Rowe is able to reach, that'll bring up the designated hitter, Evan Farrell, who doubled off Taylor back in the first to knock in the first run of the game for Seneca. Braden Taylor, the Humber pitcher, does not want to lose Rowe. Here's the 3 1. It is hit to left field. Dennis DeBanning in left field is drifting over to the foul line, and he's got it for the out. And we'll toss it back in, and Jordan Blake has to go back to first. So a fly out to deep left, two away. Yeah, this might be one of the most, uh, that's one of the best times to face Evan Farrell in this situation. He had two out, just a man on first against uh, his hot bat. Farrell has had a great tournament, the, D the DH for the Sting. Two away, runner on first, 1-1 one -one ball game. Braden Taylor steps off. And Jordan Blake, the base runner at first, goes back to first. He'll be looking to get a jump on anything that's in play here. The first pitch to Farrell is outside, ball one. Four hits in the ball game so far for the Sting. Looking to take the lead here in the bottom of the third inning. Braden Taylor hits it to left field. The Banning is under it, and it he didn't have to move very far to get it. A high fly ball, and 
DeBanning catches it for the third out of the inning and the Seneca Sting strand a runner and are unable to score. So three complete now in a 1-1 ball game, Seneca and Humber. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs here at Kinsman Civic Memorial Stadium in Oshawa. This is the 2021 OCAA Men's Baseball Championship Tournament. This is the bronze medal game you are watching here between the Humber Hawks and the Seneca Sting. Three innings gone and it's a 1-1 tie. The loser of this game gets the bronze medal and is done for the year, done for the day, done for the season. The winner will advance to play this afternoon against the St. Clair Saints. St. Clair is undefeated in the tournament and it's a double knockout tournament. So the winner of this game, in order to win the gold medal, would also have to go on to beat St. Clair twice this afternoon, Jake. And uh, St. Clair, uh, having not had to play on Thursday, they they have their pitching all in order as, as they would want and uh, are probably thinking um, this afternoon that uh, they have a shot at reclaiming that gold medal. Yeah, I think uh, St. Clair College is really sitting pretty right now. You know, you said it well enough that they've really they've had to play the least number of games out of anyone. And, uh, you know, even even looking going forward, who they have, they have their ace. Uh, Cam O'Reilly ready to go. OCAA Pitcher of the Year, All-Star, whole shebang. They have uh, their entire team rested, ready to go. And it's uh, it's going to be a very hard thing to, uh, I guess, really dethrone the Saints. The Seneca Sting will reach the podium at the OCAA Championships for the first time. Um, looking for the highest medal possible. They could still win it all here, of course, if uh, if they run the table today, as could the Humber Hawks. But Seneca has never medaled before since the uh, current format of the OCAA uh, moved into this format back in 2013. All of the medals have been, have been captured either by St. Clair, Humber, Durham, and Fanshawe. So Seneca will, at the very least, take home some kind of medal this weekend. And uh, after a number, a first place championship in the OCAA East Division this year with a record of 9-3 and three, to also go along with Matthew Naylor, Seneca's coach, being the OCAA Coach of the Year. So this has been uh, a watermark year so far for Seneca. We go to the top of the fourth inning. It'll be the four, five, six hitters for Humber and Aiden Murphy, who is one for one in the ballgame, fouls away the first pitch from Dan Sagan. Murphy's single back in the first inning brought home Stephen now Rebecca with the first Humber run. So he has the lone RBI. Murphy hits that ball high to the right side in foul territory along first base. A.J. Rowe catches it in foul territory to record the out one away. So Seneca there def taking down a very powerful bat, Nate and Murphy. They'll take that if they, uh, a, a big pop-up. Great job by Sega. He's managed to get a couple pop-ups here so far this morning. Yeah, it's uh, a lot's been in the air and not really too far gone. So it's, uh, it's not bad. And this game's moving along uh, decently quickly. The batter is Jacob Turner, designated hitter for Humber. He also has one of Humber's two hits. He singled back in the first inning. He takes ball two, two and oh now to Jacob Turner. Humber one, Seneca one, in a ball game that is moving along nicely so far. Already in the fourth inning, that ball has popped out of play, strike one. We've seen a couple of the games this weekend go well over the three hour mark. Uh, last night, Humber and Seneca, uh, St. Clair played for three hours and 20 minutes last night in a, in a seven inning game, but it just went on and on and on. There's a base hit to left field, two for two, as Jacob Turner gets his second hit of the ball game and Humber has the go ahead run at first with one away. Yeah, a lot of long games. It wouldn't be so bad if we weren't here freezing, but uh, it's the same as the players out there. It wouldn't be so bad if it was uh, you know, damn cold. It is tough to play in the cold conditions. It's a, uh, of course, late October, you never know what you're going to get. It's fall, and uh, sometimes you can get temperatures around 20 degrees, and it feels like late summer, but sometimes it feels like early winter. Mm -hmm. 
So Humber with a go-ahead run at first here with one away, top of the fourth. The batter is David Boto. And they will check the runner back at first, so Sega keeping a close eye on Turner. The Hawks would love to get Turner over to into scoring position. He has two stolen bases on the year. Sagan's pitch is swung on a miss, strike one. Boto is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He went down on strikes in the first inning with two runners on in a seven pitch at bat. He's the Humber shortstop. First year player. Sagan is ready. That pitch is just misses. One ball and one strike. Eric Baker is the catcher for the Seneca Sting. The right-handed hitter gets back into the box. It's a 1-1 count, one away, one on. 1-1 one, one is the score. Ones are wild here. That ball is fouled to the left side as Bodo is ahead of that pitch. One and two. Jacob Turner at first for Humber. Represents the go-ahead run in this game. Hawks one, Sting one. Here's the one, two. It is lifted to right field. Will the right fielder be able to get in in time? He is, he catches it for the out. Dawson Peters Keen coming in on the run and he had to be in full flight to get that ball as it was dropping quickly. Peters Keen who's been playing left field all weekend and right here, makes a big play for Seneca defensively. Yeah, it is one of the late, uh, you know, changes to the game. Again, this first uh, bit of work and well done. Caleb Batty, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, who was originally scheduled to start in right field, was injured during the warm-ups this morning and is not in the lineup for Seneca. Two away now. The batter is the catcher, Tyrus Bath. And Tyrus Bath is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He popped out the third in the second. 1-1 ball game, top of the fourth. Jacob Turner is the runner at first base, gets his lead. Runner goes, pitch is in there. They throw down to second. They have a shot at him. No, he is safe. Stolen base for Jacob Turner getting in just under the tag. Pretty good throw there from Eric Baker, but just under the tag is Turner, and now Humber with the runner in scoring position with two out. That was a such a close play. I thought originally that Seneca had him, but uh, credit to Humber's speed. They're able to get in. Again, like Brian said, just under the tag. The count, though, was 0-2 to Tyrus Bath. So Sigma is ahead. Here's the 0-2. Take a strike three. The inning is over. So right away, Dan Sagan claps his hands as he comes off the field as he gets Bath looking to end the inning. So Humber strands a base runner, the lead runner at second base, and are unable to score. Three and a half innings complete here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. It is Humber one, Seneca one. So we go to the bottom of the fourth inning now at Kinsman Stadium. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs. And uh, Jake, always uh, great to be broadcasting these games with you. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far this weekend. And uh, we're looking at a real good nail-biter ball game here. Yesterday these teams played a lopsided game that, that Humber just crushed Seneca, piling up 18 runs. But here this morning, it's a 1-1 ball game and really feels like anybody is going to take this. Yeah, Brian, always a pleasure. It's uh, always great to be out here, especially in just a high-quality contest like this. It's uh, it's really a night and day. Uh, you know, if you look at this, if you're if you're asking me later on uh, last night, is that, hey, you know, if these guys play again, you think it's going to be another one like this? I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. 
it was, it was a clear that Humber was the better team. But you know what? Maybe Seneca woke up on the right side of the bed. Maybe Humber woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Who knows? 1-1, one, one, each team with the run in the first inning. Humber with one run on three hits and an error so far. Seneca with one run on four hits, no errors. They have stranded four base runners. And they will send up the six, seven, and eight hitters in their lineup here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Humber is the home team, as you see on the score bug on the live stream. Humber, the visiting team, even though they did have the better regular season record, Seneca was a division champion. They finished first in the OCAA East, and for that, they do get home field advantage in this elimination game. It is the bronze medal game. The loser of this game will, will be presented with bronze medals for finishing third in the OCAA this year. The winner will move on to the gold-silver game set up with the St. Clair Saints this afternoon. So bottom of the fourth we go. And the first batter hits a base hit to left field. That is Melvin Pujols leading things off for Seneca here in the bottom of the fourth inning with a solid single to left field. Fifth hit of the ball game for the Sting, and they are in business here in the bottom of the fourth. You really saw Pujols just ambush that fastball. First one he saw just flicked it right over the third baseman's head. Great job. Braden Taylor remains on the mound for the Humber Hawks. As mentioned, that's the fifth hit he has surrendered so far in the ball game. But it is the first time in the game that Seneca has been able to get the leadoff batter on base. The batter is Eric Baker. Eric Baker is the catcher for Seneca. He is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He struck out in the second. Melvin Pujols is the go, represents the go-ahead run for Seneca at first. Ball is hit on the ground. Aiden Murphy up with it, throws on to second for one. They try and return it back to first, but there's no throw as it's a fielder's choice. So Baker is on at first, and Pujols is out at second, one away. Yeah, I think uh, I think they'll take that, just getting extra, getting out there. Done. The veteran Aiden Murphy knowing that in a tie game like this, the key thing, if you can do it, is to get the lead runner. And they managed to do that there. So Pujols is out at second. Fielder's choice for Baker. He's on at first with one out. It'll be Dawson Peters Keene now. He's one for one in the ball game. He singled in the second inning. He has one of the five hits for Seneca. Count is 0-1. Taylor is ready, runner goes. Here's the pitch, check swing, it's a ball, they throw down to second, high, and no problem for Baker getting in there with the stolen base, and now he moves into scoring position. So a big stolen base there for the Sting. Eric Baker had three stolen bases during the season. Big one there for Seneca as he moves into scoring position. Big swing and a miss there from Dawson Peters Keene as Braden Taylor pulls the string a little bit there. Nice pitch from the uh, Humber pitcher. Yeah, it really was. They're doing a great job here of uh, deceiving what's going on here. Live hitters sitting on fastball and great fastball counts and they're able to execute with off speed. Here comes the one two pitch to Dawson Peters Keene. And it just misses for ball two. Eric Baker is the runner for Seneca at second base. You can see him right in the middle of your screen. Just stole second a moment ago. Would represent the go-ahead run in this ball game here in the fourth inning. Count is two balls and two strikes to Dawson Peters Keene. Braden Taylor, the pitcher, is ready. Here it comes. It is on the ground. Fair ball. No, it's a foul ball. It goes off of his shoe. Foul ball, we'll do it again. Oh, 
Now, if you're Peter Skeen here, you're obviously looking to put a ball in play, trying to get something to the right side at the very least. You're down in the, or it's 2-2 in the count, but you're in a protective mode here, but you want to try and advance that runner to third. Yeah, you know what, if I was Peter Skeen here, it'd just be a fairy, you know, be shorting up my swing. I would take away any, like, little accessory bits there and just get right back to fundamentals, just trying to put the ball on the ground. Here's the 2-2. Two, two. Low and away, ball three, so it's three and two. And now Peter Skeen maybe a little more in the driver's seat. This will be the seventh pitch at the at-bat, so he's seen quite a few pitches here from Taylor. Seneca one, Humber one. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Winner goes to the gold medal matchup against St. Clair this afternoon. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Big out for Braden Taylor there, the Humber pitcher, as he records his third strikeout of the game. It's a big one. And now there are two out. It'll bring up the number nine hitter, Heath Gordon Moore, with a chance to put his team ahead now, but two out here for Seneca in the bottom of the fourth inning. Gordon Moore is 0 for 1 in the game. He struck out in the second. He will look at strike one from Braden Taylor. Taylor looking to once again strand a Seneca runner. They have left four in the ball game on base so far. At least one in every inning. Taylor trying to keep this game tied. Here's the 0-1. Swung on and missed. Strike two. I'm not sure if... Uh, I think he was half thinking of swinging, half not. I'm not really too sure what to call that swing. Kind of lunged at that a little bit from the from the left side here. But now he's down 0-2. So Braden Taylor for Humber in the driver's seat. Go ahead run for Seneca is at second base. That is Eric Baker. As the sun shine, now we have a nice, nice sunny day here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. The temperature warming up just a little bit. It was three degrees at game time. Probably a little warmer now. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It is off speed and misses. One and two. If Gordon Moore can reach, Gabe Bourgeois, the leadoff hitter, is on deck for Seneca. Heath Gordon Moore here. The batter for Seneca. Facing a one-two count against Braden Taylor of Humber. Pitch is in the dirt. It bounces away from Tyrus Bath, and that will allow Baker to move up to third base. Not what Humber was looking for there. They were looking to get uh, Gordon Moore to chase a pitch, but no way for doing that. That bounced well in front of the plate and no chance on the wild pitch as Baker comes down to third. Yeah, that's always a risk with a, a curveball there. You, you know, obviously, the goal is you want it down. You don't want that ball hanging because if it drops, the slower pitch, the guys are just going to hammer it. Obviously, that's a risk. It's going to bounce. It's going to get away. So we are in a big situation here now in the bottom of the fourth inning with Seneca with the go-ahead run at third base with two out. Count is two and two. Here's the pitch. It's very high. Ball three. Heath. Gordon Moore with a full count now. And Eric Baker at third base on the left side of your screen looking to bring home the go-ahead run for the Sting here in the bottom of the fourth. Braden Taylor looking to get out of it. Here's the pitch. It is hit to right and it bounces past the second baseman Lockwood into right field for a base hit and Seneca takes the lead two to one. Well, that ball was hit really hard to the second baseman there, but I don't know if I agree with him just trying to put the glove out there. He had he still had plenty of time to get his body in front of that, but he didn't. Hudson Lockwood, the second baseman, not able to come up with it for the Humber Hawks there, and it is a clutch two-out single by Heath Gordon Moore, who originally was not in the lineup in this game and is was in the moved into the lineup just moments before the game because of an injury to Caleb Batty. So he comes up big in a situation and there's another base hit for Seneca as Gabe Bourgeois rips one over the shortstop's head into left field 
And now Seneca has runners at first and second with two out. They are leading this game two to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that's gonna bring a mound visit from the Humber coaching staff. You kind of see as uh, the Humber coach coming out to have a quick word with the catcher, or pardon me, kitchen, pitcher and catcher. You see the bullpen start to get moving a little bit. A few members of the Humber team sprinting down the left field line just to start getting loose and get their guys ready. Bourgeois hit there is the third of the inning for Seneca. They have brought one home. Heath Gordon Moore's RBI single with two out puts Seneca in front, two to one. And now Gabe Bourgeois with the follow-up single to move Gordon Moore over to second. Bourgeois is at first. There are two out, and Seneca looking for more here. They have the lead, two to one, against Braden Taylor. Humber has had its mound visit. They're trying to settle things down here, but they have given up the lead. Again, yesterday, Humber demolished Seneca in a game 18 to five. Now they find themselves down two to one here in the bronze medal game. Things can change very quickly in the sport of baseball. The batter is Logan Isaacs. He comes up with runners at first and second and two out. His team is up 2-1. Taylor's pitch is in there, swung and a miss, strike one. Good pitch. Isaacs is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He is grounded out twice. Chance to extend the lead here for the Sting. They lead it two to one. Braden Taylor looks at the runners. Now here comes the 0-1 pitch. It's low and in the dirt. It gets away from Bath. The runners are gonna go. We will not have a play. Bath could not get to the ball in time and the runners move up on another wild pitch. And all of a sudden, two runners in scoring position. And uh, you can really feel a lot of pressure on Humber right now. Yeah, you can feel uh, this is going to be one of the big moments of the game here. Another ball in the dirt and just squirts away from the catcher path. He's done on a very good job all weekend long. The 1-1 pitch swung on and missed. Strike two. It's Braden Taylor, the Humber pitcher, looks to work out of a jam here. Great pitch. He's managed to get Isaacs in a couple of strikes, but it's now one and two. It would be a huge lift for the Hawks here to work out of this jam. Taylor is ready, here's the throw. And it hits the batter. He got to count of one and two, but he lost the handle on that one and Isaacs is hit by the pitch and the bases are loaded. I had a strange feeling like something like that might happen. You grip the ball too tight, you try to do too much. And you end up plunking him. So bases loaded, two out here for Seneca. They lead it two to one. And the batter is Jordan Blake. He is two for two in the ball game. He has doubled and singled. He has scored a run, and he fouls off the first pitch from Taylor. Nowhere to put him as far as Humber is concerned. Trying to limit the damage here to just the single run. Humber bullpen really starting to get moving. They saw their uh, pitching coaches go down the left field line. Just to kind of see how their guys are doing as that one hits. That ball is hit to the outfield. Now Rebecca in center field is under it. He's got it for the out, and that's a huge out for Humber as the Seneca Sting leave runners at the relieve the bases loaded here in the fourth inning. But they do get one run to take the lead. Four complete. It is Seneca two, Humber one. So a big inning for Seneca with one run in the bottom of the fourth inning to take a 2-1 lead here in this bronze medal game against the Humber Hawks. But Jake, they did leave the bases loaded. And with their number three hitter up, who was two for two, hits a, a fly ball to center. But uh, they've left, they're up two to one, but they have stranded seven for the first four innings. And, you know, you just don't like, you know, you, you do the hard work to, to, to set the table, but just not able to cash in as much as they would have liked there. 
Yeah, it really opens up, uh, you know, the feeling of regret. You always got to look back and you know, look back after this game or even like after the things like, man, we left uh, so many runners on. Who knows what happened if we could just score those guys. It's all about a game of like what ifs and, you know, <laughs> what if they were able to, you know, cash in a few more. But really, you know, not only is you kind of thinking of that, it really frustrates some of your hitters because, you know, you know you, again, like you said, they're doing all the work to get on. But they're missing the key. They're missing the missing puzzle piece to score runs. Of course, you can never question the heart of a champion. They say that in sports many times. You've, it takes a lot to win a championship. It takes a lot to defend a championship. The Humber Hawks have done that. They are the two-time defending champions in this tournament. They win. They won it in 2018 and 2019. They do have a lot of veteran leadership on their team. Uh, we saw them get down six nothing last night against St. Clair but then chipped away and got back into the ball game and almost rallied to tie it, yeah. ended up losing it 7-5. to five. Uh, Humber, we've seen them do it over the years. You can never count them out, even though they might be on, feel like they're on the ropes a bit here. It's only a 2-1 ball game, and they have three innings left. Yeah, exactly. There's still plenty of uh, baseball left to play in both of them. You know, we always talk about how Humber can explode for bunches at any time but clearly you know what we can still see uh, uh, Seneca kind of jump out so here in the top of the fifth inning now for Humber the batter is Robert Champion right fielder count is 2-0 and oh quickly against Dan Sega the 8-9 and 1 hitters for Humber Humber trailing this game 2-1 to one, but like we say they're only down by one we're in the fifth inning lots of time left as Sagan bounces that in for ball three Champion is 0 for 1 in the ball game. He struck out. He is one of the three strikeout victims so far in the game for Humber. Dan Sega, though, is behind 3 and 0 here. There's a pitch in for a strike, 3 and 1. Humber Hawks would love nothing more than to get the leadoff runner on here in the top of the fifth inning. Here's the 3 1 from Sega. And it is taken for ball, for, oh, it's a strike. Champion thought he had ball four and whipped the bat away there to the left side. And the count is now three and two. I mean, to be fair, I think that's been a ball all day long. So big call there, Sagan gets it to three and two. Here's the payoff, take strike three. As Champion took the pitch, it dropped through the zone, and after a 3-0 count, Sagan comes back with his fourth strikeout of the game and the second against Champion, one away. That is a huge out for Seneca here in the fifth inning. Yeah, it is always important to get that first out because it just keeps the ball rolling, keeps the boulder down the hill. So the bases are empty now with one out, and it will be Hudson Lockwood, the second baseman. He looks at ball one from Dan Sagan. OCAA batting champion Stephen now Rebecca is on deck. That pitch is fouled away. Count moves to one and one. Seneca taking the lead a few minutes ago in the bottom of the fourth inning on a RBI single by Heath Gordon Moore. 2-1 Seneca, we're in the top of the fifth inning. Here is the 1-1. Swung on a miss, strike two. Good pop on that pitch from Sagan. Yeah, Sagan I think here is, looks like he's uh, digging a little deeper right now. He's found a new gear. He also knows that you can see Stephen now Rebecca, OCW batting champion on deck. He knows he's coming up next. Here's the 1-2. Ball has popped up, maybe a play here as they are unable to get it. The third baseman, Jordan Blake, came all the way over in front of the Humber dugout on the third base side and it just dropped between the catcher and the third base. So Lockwood gets another life here. That was a, that, a tough play. That ball almost came right down on the, on the batting circle where the uh, Humber Hawks have all of their... their warm-up uh, or pre-swing pre equipment on the ground there. So it was a tough position to catch that ball. Yeah, it really is. It really is uh, dangerous because you step on one of that, it's, uh, it's over. Strike three taken as Lockwood looks at 
Sagan's pitch comes into the zone and it's a second consecutive strikeout looking for Humber here in the top of the fifth inning. Two away, that is strikeout number five for Sagan. Bases are empty here and it'll be Steven Nowrabecki. He is one for one in the ball game. He was hit by a pitch to start the game and scored the first run of the game. He hits that one hard down the right side, but it's foul, 0-1. We saw now Rebecca reach base back in the third with a bunt, uh, but he was quickly erased on a double play, and that was a, a, a big defensive play at that point when you had the, the heart of the order coming up for Humber and a double play erased that leadoff bunt by now Rebecca in the third. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a miserable feeling when you have guys work. Now Rebecca hits that one to right field and it's gonna drop in front of Dawson Peters Keen in right field. So it's the second hit of the ball game for the OCWA batting champion, Stephen Nowrabecki. And he is a two out base runner. He represents the tying run here for Humber in the top of the fifth inning. And here comes Dennis DeBanning, OCAA player of the year. Hit five home runs in the regular season. He is 0 for two in the ball game. He grounded to third and he grounded into a double play back in the third. Will this be the moment DeBanning comes alive? The runner goes, now Rebecca goes down to second. The pitch is high and wild. It's a stolen base for now Rebecca. He moves into scoring position. That ball was, that flew right off the handle from Sagan. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to go an off speed there. Oh, oh. Probably going with the curveball because he's feeling real comfortable with that recently. And uh, no, he just completely did not even get a, a good hold on it. Now Rebecca goes down to second, so he's in scoring position. That's the tying run for Humber here in the fifth. Count is 1-0 to Dennis DeBanning. Pitch is taken at the belt for a strike. One ball and one strike. Humber hoping their bats can come alive here in the fifth inning. Four hits in the game so far only. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That is hit to center field. It's a base hit through the middle. Now Rebecca comes around third. He is coming home and will score. RBI single for Dennis DeBanning. Coming alive at the right time here for Humber. And the game is tied at two. There you go. So some two out magic here for Humber. The bases were empty and then now Rebecca bloops a single to right field, steals second, and then is brought home by Dennis DeBanning. So now the go ahead run for Humber is at first here in the top of the fifth. And the batter is Justin Raspanti. He is 0 for 2 in the game with a couple of ground outs. We will keep an eye on DeBanning at first. Will he try and get into scoring position? We saw now Rebecca be regressive there, Jake. Yeah, you know what, I think uh, Sega is gonna really have to watch watch him the banning over at first base. The banning has some pretty serious speed. He can easily take a bag. First pitch to Raspati is in there for a strike. 0-1 to the number three hitter for the Hawks. 2-2 two -two here in the top of the fifth inning. Runner at, runner at first, two out. Runner does not go. Pitch is lifted to left field. Heath Gordon Moore is there, he's got it. The inning is over. So it's a run on two hits for Humber to tie the game and they do strand the go ahead run. Four and a half complete here in a real barn burner of a game right now. It is Seneca two, Humber two. Brian Oliver along with Jacob Ebbs here at Kinsman Stadium in Oshawa. Glad you could join us on the live stream watching a real good ball game here between the Humber Hawks and the Seneca Sting. Bronze medal game of the 2021 OCAA Men's Baseball Championship. If you just joined us, this has been a very intriguing game. You know, yesterday we saw Humber demolish Seneca 18-5. 
in the uh, in the in round three of the tournament. And uh, here it's been a different story with a lot of base runners stranded, but only two runs in the ball game. Humber with runs in the first and the fifth. Seneca with runs in in the first and the fourth, and they are coming up to bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning. But uh, the, the 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 big play in this game is still yet to happen because we're in a two-two tie. Yeah, I completely agree. It's been uh, I have been a bit surprised, honestly, with just with uh, you know there has been some runners on and things like that, but just uh, unable to capitalize. I just you know with uh, how big of a game we saw yesterday on you know on both sides, there, there was some run production both ways, especially on Humber's side. But we haven't seen it yet. It does feel that, that Seneca's probably had the better of the offensive opportunities so for the most part in this game right now and uh, that they have stranded seven base runners throughout and they left the bases loaded back in the fourth inning after briefly taking the lead and uh, left, left those runs on the table and Humber came back and tied it in the top of the fifth. Yep. Braden Taylor continues on the mound for the Hawks here in the fifth inning. It is the four, five, six hitters for Seneca here in the fifth. It is A.J. Rowe leading things off. And he will look at a strike from Taylor. Count is one ball and one strike. Rowe knocked in a run back in the first inning. The ball was hit to third base and dropped at first by the Hawks. That ball is hit to third base. And they this time will they get him? It is dropped again. Exactly what happened in the First inning, a ball hit to third base. Justin Raspanti comes to third base. Aiden Murphy unable to come up with the ball at first in the cold conditions here. And A.J. Rowe, man, that was just like carbon copy what happened in the first inning. I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really too sure. He set his feet and it just he didn't, didn't make a good throw again. Not sure whether you call that a hit or call that an error. Probably have to call that an error. Yeah, you have to call an error. So it's one on, nobody out. That's the go-ahead run for Seneca here for on first. Nobody out in the bottom of the fifth inning. The batter is Evan Farrell. Farrell is one for two in the ball game. He doubled back in the first inning. Farrell hits it hard to right center field. That's in there for a base hit. Rowe digging for third, he will make it. And the Seneca Sting have runners at first and third with nobody out and Farrell comes through again, Jake. Yeah, he really did, honestly. Great job by the Humber center fielder there. He was able to spin and fire that ball in within a second of him getting that ball. Saved Farrell from uh, advancing in a double. That was now Rebecca in center field. Making a, making a play there to limit Farrell to a single, but it does allow A.J. Rowe, who reached on the error, to come all the way to third base, and now the go-ahead run for Seneca is at third. In a 2-2 ball game in the fifth inning, the batter is Melvin Pujols. And he swings and misses. It's the first pitch from Braden Taylor for strike one. There is action in the Humber bullpen right now as Maxim Skoropatsky starts throwing. He was throwing earlier on back in the last inning. He was, yeah. Humber defense all the way in. They're trying to cut down this run here. If you're Seneca right now, you got to try to get a fly ball, get it decently high. That pitch is high to Pujols. The count goes to one and one. A.J. Rowe at third, Evan Farrell at first. 2-2 two -two ball game. Seneca looking to go back out on top here in the bottom of the fifth inning of this bronze medal game. Melvin Pujols is one for two in the game. He singled back in the fourth. Here's the one-one from Taylor. It is on the ground and foul just to the left side of the third base bag and the count goes to one and two. As you mentioned, Jake, Humber with the infielders here, very tight on the infield grass, looking to cut home or cut any kind of play, or the, the stop the third base, runner on third base from coming in to score. Yeah, they're going to do whatever it takes here. It's it's all about, in this case, keeping the ball in front of you. Here's the one, two. Swung on and fouled away, and we'll do it again. That ball, you could hear it just tick as it came over the plate. Count is one and two. Nobody out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Seneca threatening again. 2-2 two, two ball game. 
Melvin Pujols looking for his second hit of the ball game. Braden Taylor with the one, two. Runner from first goes, he swings and misses for strike three. Farrell was running on the pitch, goes down to second. Takes the double playoff and probably has to force Humber to keep the, the infield in here. Yeah, I think the same thing is gonna apply here. So Pujols is out on strikes. That is the fourth strikeout of the game for Braden Taylor, the Humber pitcher. Trying to work out of a huge jam here in the fifth. The batter is Eric Baker. Baker is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He has struck out. He reached on a fielder's choice and later scored in the fourth inning, the second run for Seneca. Count is 1 and 0. Runners at second and third here with one out. Scoring opportunity as Baker swings and misses. Strike one. Where's jersey number 22? Bats from the left side. Rowe at third, Farrell at second. Defense is on the infield here. The Everyone in, Humber defensively on the infield. That ball is fouled away for strike two. Seneca not wanting to let another huge opportunity slip away from them right here, Jake. Yeah, you know what, It's uh, this is the opportunity. This is the time right now that they really have to bear down and strike here. Braden Taylor shakes off the first pitch. Now he's set. Here comes the one, two. Fouled away. Big cut. And Baker just stays alive. With a one and two count. A big moment here for Seneca in the bottom of the fifth inning. 2-2 two -two ball game. Trying to take the lead. Taylor is ready. Here it comes. It is lifted to behind into the uh, to the left field Dennis DeBanning catches it in left field and will fire it home and will get the second out oh, of the no. ball game now the ball gets away defensively and Farrell has to scramble back to second so uh, almost a fatal mistake there by Seneca on the base pass but uh, a big out there for the Humber defense as Taylor gets a fly ball to left field that was behind short and in front of the outfielders, but Dennis DeBanning coming all the way in to make that catch. Yeah, that was uh, it was way too short for Seneca to even think about tagging up on that one. So it'll be up to Dawson Peters Keene now. Right-handed hitter comes up here, two out now. Runners at second and thirty, swings and misses at strike one. Will Humber be able to work out yet out of another jam here in the fifth inning? Dawson Peters Keene is one for two in the ball game. He singled in the second and struck out in the fourth. Here's the 0-1. He takes it. It's right there for strike two. Probably wants that one back. Yeah, definitely. That one floated. Seneca with runners at second and third. Two out. Trying to take the lead here against Humber in the fifth inning. Taylor is ready. Here's the pitch. It is high. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Taylor hoping to maybe get Peters King to chase something high there. Did, did not pull the trigger. It's one and two. Oh, it's a very common case. 0-2, oh, you're going to see a fastball up. Just try and elevate, elevate the eyesight. He lays off, drop the curve. The 1-2 pitch is low and blocked nicely there by Tyrus Bath, the catcher, to ensure it doesn't get past him because if it does, that would easily allow the runner in third to come home to score. It would, absolutely. Pressure on everybody here in a tense situation. 2-2, two -two, bottom of the fifth inning, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Here's Taylor's pitch. It is swung on a miss for strike three. And... Taylor glances and glares at the Seneca bench as he comes off the field as he works out of an enormous jam again and strands two Seneca Sting to end the inning. Five complete here in Oshawa at Kinsman Stadium. It is Humber two, Seneca two. He better hope he wins this ball game. <laughs>
Wow. Seneca there with an enormous opportunity with runners on the corners with nobody out. Then there was a strikeout to Pujols and Farrell moved to second base on a stolen base, but Eric Baker flied out to left and Dawson Peters Keene strikes out fifth uh, strikeout victim of the game for Braden Taylor, the Hawks pitcher, and now the momentum swing maybe moves just a little bit toward the Humber side of things as we go to the sixth inning. Yeah, it really does. He, <laughs> that was kind of like a tight wire act to get out of that inning. Second and third, no one out. Really had to bear down, get the job done, and that he did. Really feels like Seneca has had Humber on the ropes all game long and just have not been able to get that crucial hit. They stranded another two runners there. Now nine runners stranded through five innings for Seneca. And they've had they've had their opportunities and have just not been able to cash in and, and, and get that, that fatal blow to take down the two-time defending champion Humber Hawks. So the Hawks will get another chance to get on top in this game. They did lead it. In the first inning, they got the first run of the ball game in the top of the first. Seneca answered with one in the bottom of that inning. Seneca went up with one in the bottom of the fourth inning, 2-1, but again left the bases loaded. And Humber tied it back in the fifth inning. Two outs, nobody on. Uh, Stephen now Rebecca hit a, a two-out single, stole second, and then was brought home with the tying run by Dennis DeBanning with a single. And that's where we are right now, 2-2 going to the sixth inning. Humber in the blue jerseys, dark blue jerseys with the yellow numbers. They are the visiting team. And it will be the four, five, six hitters. Leading things off here is the veteran, Aiden Murphy. One for two in the ball game. Singled in the first, and he singles here again in the bottom or top of the sixth inning with a solid single to left field. Takes a huge turn. And the ball almost gets away from Seneca at second base. But Aiden Murphy leading his team with a leadoff single here in the top of the sixth. On the first pitch too, Jake. Yeah, that was uh, ambush tactics right there. I think, uh, you know, what you were talking about the men's a few mo moments ago, it is uh, definitely in Humber's corner now. So, as I mentioned, 2-2 two -two ball game. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Humber, the visiting team, they get the leadoff runner on. And Aiden Murphy, the batter, will be Jacob Turner, the designated hitter. He's two for two in the ball game with a couple of hits. So he's had the hot bat for Humber in this game. Pitch is high. Runner does not go. You can see the infielders coming in here expecting the bunt. And it goes for a ball. And that is going to bring out the Seneca coaching staff here to figure out what they're going to do defensively is the the lead the go ahead run is represented by Aiden Murphy at first base so if you're humber you know you're looking potentially at a bunt situation here although turner has had the hot bat he's uh, he's two for two yeah it's it's a very it's a very tough situation you know you take the bat out of someone who's you know he's really been seeing the ball well and like he's had this pitcher's numbers all day long but uh you know what that team at bat he's still got some speed he might be able to beat this one out if he gets it down you look at the uh, the lower part of the Humber lineup so far as they we go through the order the third time here, and the, the 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 six, seven, eight, and nine hitters for Humber in this game are a collective 0 for 8, with five strikeouts. Yeah. So nobody in the lineup beneath Turner has been able to to get a hit here. So this is a big moment here for Humber here in the top of the sixth. The runner does not go, and it's scorched to left field, base hit. That'll get the job done as Jacob Turner is three for three in the ball game now. And Humber has runners at first and second with nobody out in a tie ball game. You saw, you saw Turner there just uh, drop the bat as if he was going to go for the bunt, pull it back, and just scorched it. Frozen rope. The defense was in there for Seneca, and uh, that when you hit the ball that hard, there's just no way for the defenders to, to make a play on it. So that's a, a solid, solid base hit for Turner, and that brings up the shortstop, David Boto. He's 0, 0 for 2 in the ballgame, and you wouldn't be thinking about here. I'm thinking that he's probably going to be you know, 0 for 2 there. He definitely is going to be trying to put down the bunt. First and second, 
Nobody out. Humber two, Seneca two. Sagan, the runners, well, that ball is bunted. The runners did move with the contact, but the ball rolls foul to the left side. It's 0-1. Boto trying to lay down the bunt here. And uh, we mentioned this last night, the, the, the undulations of the infield here at Kinsman Stadium. If the ball gets down in the dirt, it, it's very hard for that ball to stay fair. Everything sort of rolls off. You almost have to get it on the grass. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, you got to be looking around. You got to see just the like different valleys and cliffs, things like that in nature. Putting it maybe down to the right side, just get something down into the grass where it can kind of just hold up. So it's an 0-1 pitch. The defense comes in, and now Dan Sagan, the pitcher for Seneca, steps off. Now what's going on here is that Seneca is trying to execute what's called the wheel play here, and that means they're trying to go for the run at third base. That's their whole intention here. Leaving early, so that's why they're. I think they're readjusting here. So lots happening here in the top of the sixth inning. Aiden Murphy is the runner at second. J Jacob Turner is at first. Nobody out. Count is 0-1 to David Boto. The wheel play is on, the pitch is high, and it goes off the glove of the catcher, and the runners will advance on a wild pitch. Question becomes now, do they put him on, load the bases to have a guy who's also 0-4 and have the bottom of the lineup who, as, uh, as Brian said a moment ago, has not gone on base yet, has not successfully hit. Or do you leave, to leave this guy in the box? Also could potentially see a squeeze in a situation like this too. The infield is in, wheels turning. 1-1 one, one count to Boto and he will check his swing, not pull the trigger, it's a ball, two and one. Second and third, nobody out here for Humber as they look to take the lead again in this ball game here in the top of the sixth inning. David Boto with a 2-1 count against Dan Sagan. Pitch is high, 3-1. And, and that one, he just didn't seem to finish that throw as it flew out of his hand. We saw earlier in, the, in this sequence one fly out of his hand and went right over the catcher for a wild pitch. Yeah, exactly. That seems to be a little bit of uh, the issue at this point. He's just not getting out there. He's not finishing his pitch. So here's the 3-1 pitch. It's a big one. And it is high up in the face of Boto. He tosses his bat and runs down to first with a walk. The bases are loaded with nobody out. It looks like uh, Dave for second here is, uh, is done. In this inning, Aiden Murphy led things off with a, with a single on the very first pitch of the inning. He was followed by Jacob Turner with the single. They moved from first and second down to second and third, and that is the end of the line for Sagan in this game as he comes off. So we'll see a, pinch, uh, a new pitcher in the ball game here for Seneca. Bases loaded, nobody out. As mentioned, uh, they were looking to try and get the bunt down, but then there was a wild pitch, and that allowed the, the uh, base runners to move up to second and third, and then Boto walks on five pitches to load the bases. Yeah, yeah, no, it was uh, <laughs> the uh, a very tough spot for Seneca, and uh, the lad coming out of the bullpen at this point, he is, uh, he is in major trouble. So coming on into the game now, it'll be Jake Ruby. We saw him pitch yesterday. Seguin will leave the ball game in a 2-2 tie. Pitched a great game, but his, t his just did not get the run support that he needed. And, and as we've mentioned all along, Seneca had all kinds of scoring opportunities, but unable to, to really break through. They, they could be up by a lot in this game, but it's a 2-2 tie. And now... Humber, as you say, you never count them out. They've uh, managed to load the bases here in the top of the sixth inning with nobody out. It's Jake Ruby this year led the Seneca Sting with five appearances. 
does have one save to his credit. He threw eight innings and posted an earned run average of 3.5. But uh, this is the, the biggest moment of the season for sure for him, Certainly. as it is for the Sting, as uh, they're looking to knock off the two-time defending OCAA champion Humber Hawks here in the bronze medal game of the 2021 OCAA Men's Baseball Championship, but they are going to have to work out of a, a major jam here. Now we've seen Braden Taylor of the Humber Hawks work out of some jams on the other side of things, but now it's going to be Seneca's turn to try and work things out. And it'll be Tyrus Bath coming up here. The base is loaded, nobody out. 0 for 2 in the ball game. He has popped out to third. He has struck out looking. Ruby is ready. Here's the first pitch. It is off speed and drifts in there for a strike. Just seemed to hang out there for a long, long time and Bath just looked at it go by. Yeah, that's, uh, that one hung. That pitch has got more velocity on it, but it is not in the zone. One ball and one strike. Bases loaded, nobody out. Tyrus Bath with a chance to put Humber up in front here in the sixth inning. Pitch is low and in the dirt, two and one. Aiden Murphy at third, Jacob Turner at second, David Boto at first. Infield is in for the Seneca Sting here. Nobody out. Time is called at the plate. Now we're ready to go again. Here's the two one from Ruby. And it is in there. Strike two. Very similar to the first pitch he threw, Jake. Not a lot on it, but right over the plate. No, that one, that one just floated. That had a hang time on it. Two two pitch to Bath. Here it comes. It is lifted to left field. Could be trouble. It is in there. Into the corner it goes. One run is in. Murphy scores. Here comes the second run. It is a huge two-run double from Tyrus Bath, and the Humber Hawks are up four to two. That was after watching those two uh, sail in there. Well, I wouldn't even say sail there, float in there. You could see him be visibly upset with himself. He gets the fastball and just cranks it down left field line. Still nobody out here for Humber as they now have the upper hand, leading 4-2 in the top of the sixth inning. The batter is Robert Champion. He's 0-2 with a couple of strikeouts in the ball game. Humber just taking the lead here on a clutch two-run double by Tyrus Bath to put his team up in front. Bath at second, Bodo at third. Ruby's pitch misses. It's 2-0. Infield still in for Seneca on the defensive side as they will try and cut down the run at home. There's a floater and it's in there for a strike. Two balls and one strike. I wouldn't even, uh, I'd be sitting on that floater right there if I got it, oh boy. And that's what Tyrus Bath did just a moment ago to knock in the go ahead runs here for Humber. That pitch misses, three and one. Jake Ruby, now with a 3-1 count against Robert Champion. Nobody out here for Humber in the top of the sixth. They lead it 4-2. That ball is hit to right field. Could be trouble. Dawson Peters Keen is going for it. He can't get it. It's over his head. Bounces off the wall. That is going to score two more runs. And no, it isn't. It's only going to score one run. And they've got the runner held up between second and third right now. And Champion will be tagged out with the first out of the inning, but he does hit a double to make it a 5-2 ball game. I'm not too sure what happened on that base running there. Well, it looked like Bodo was going to, or rather uh, Bath was going to come around and score, but he held up coming around third. 
and uh, did not come in with the sixth run. And I think that uh, the champion was expecting that third base would be vacant. And when he came around and I got halfway from between second and third, he saw, uh-oh, my teammate's still there. Back he goes. The Seneca Sting, though, managed to run him down in a rundown between second and third to get a big out. But it is a, another run batted in for Seneca, and they lead it 5-2. So Boto is scored on that play. Tyrus Bath, who was on second, held up at third, which is uh, in a way surprising because that ball was way over the head of, uh, it went all the way to the wall. And uh, it's amazing that he didn't score from second on that actually. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not too sure what happened there because it was clearly well over the right fielder's head. He would have had, he could have, could have easily walked home actually. Yeah. But uh, we're going to see another pitching change here for Seneca as they now trail it 5-2 to two in the sixth inning. And uh, those missed opportunities earlier in the game for Seneca coming back to haunt them right now. They left a lot of runners on base and uh, were not able to cash in. And now Humber has found its groove here in the sixth inning, leading it 5-2. to two. Well, like we said all, uh, all tournament long, when Humber scores, they score in bunches. It'll be Ethan Hagparast-Rad will be coming on the mound here. Number 30 will be pitching. Hagparast-Rad made only one appearance during the regular season. Let's say that name three times fast with two innings pitched. And he comes on here on a very high stage. Runner at third, one out, infield in again here for Seneca. The batter is Lockwood. Hudson Lockwood, the second baseman, is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Runner at third here, more to cash for the Hawks if they can get it here in the sixth inning. That ball is on the ground to the second baseman and it will toss over to first to get the out. So having the infield in there pays off for Seneca as Bath has to hold up at third. Well, I guess the only bright spot in this situation is if uh, you know you have a runner on third, two outs, you got the batting champion, Nara Brecky up. That's right, it'll be Steven Nara Brecky coming up here now with two out, a runner on third, Seneca leading it, or, uh, sorry, Humber leading it five to two. Now Rebecca is two for two in the ball game, and he'll look at strike one. Two singles, one of them was a bunt. He was also hit by a pitch back to lead off the game. Seneca looking to limit the damage to just the three runs here in the sixth inning. Here's the pitch, it is low, it gets away from the catcher, but not far enough away for Tyrus Bath to come home from third. He has to hold up. Humber with three runs here in the top of the sixth inning to take a five to two lead in this bronze medal game against Seneca. They were trailing for much of the game. Pitch is high. Two and O. Oh. Only a matter of time you give the Humber Hawks chance, a few chances. Once they get some base runners, they, they eventually are going to find a find a way to do it. As now Rebecca lifts that ball to left field, it looks like it's in foul territory. It is. It lands to the left of the third baseline. And it is strike one. Two balls and one strike to Steven now Rebecca. Bath was looking to score the sixth run there, but has to go back to third. Yeah, that one, uh, it, I think the wind might have just kind of caught that one at the end there and just drifted it foul. 2-2 two -two umpire saying, I think. Okay, correction. So it, look, maybe the count is two and two. 
Pat Gross Rat is ready. That ball is hit on the ground to first base. First base and cannot come up with it. They throw to first, and he is safe. Now Rebecca is safe on a defensive bobble there behind first base. And Bath comes in to score the sixth run of the ball game. That's a huge one for Humber. It is now six to two. Now Rebecca there went <laughs> head first into the bag just to make sure he gave himself the the best chance possible. Dangerous, but it works out. Now Rebecca on base there and uh, now on base for the fourth time in the ball game. Probably going to be scored an error there as that ground ball just sort of ate up the first base. A.J. Rowe and they were not able to record the out. That allowed Bath to come in to score the fourth run of the inning for Humber. It is now 6-2. to two. And now Rebecca at first with two out. The batter is Dennis DeBanning. He is one for three in the ball game, but that one was a big one back in the fifth inning as he tied the game with a single. And DeBanning rips that down the left field line past third base. It goes into the corner. Now Rebecca will dig for third. DeBanning will go into second with a double. And it is now two on with two out for Humber as DeBanning gets his second consecutive hit and the bats are really coming alive here for Humber. Yeah, they really are. So that moves, moves now Rebecca to third base. He reached on the error. Four runs in in a huge Humber sixth inning here. A team that's capable of putting crooked numbers on the board. Doing it again here this morning in the bronze medal game. Humber leads it 6-2. to two. We're in the top of the sixth inning. The batter is Justin Raspanti. He's 0-3. for 3. He looks at strike one. All of a sudden, a bat around inning here for the Humber Hawks. Chris Patty is the ninth batter of the inning. Seneca has gone through two pitchers here. The 0-1 pitch is on the ground. Hit to second base. Throwing over to first and in the dirt, Melvin Pujols will get it to A.J. Rowe. The inning is over. But it's a big one for Humber. Four runs come in. They lead it. 6-2 to two as we go to the bottom of the sixth, Seneca coming to bat. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Seneca had a 2-1 lead in this game. Then they saw that lead evaporate to 2-2. And there in the sixth inning, the wheels came off a little bit for, for Seneca as Humber plates four runs and lead it 6-2. Seneca, though, with two chances to offensively here. They've had a lot of base runners throughout the game. And Jake, we've talked about it. Uh, they've they've ha they've had their chances. They should have way more than two runs in this ball game. Should be, you know, they could have been leading, um, but at, at this point, uh, two runs to show for it. And having stranded four, seven, nine batters in this game through the first five innings, so they they're going to need some execution here offensively to get back into it. Yeah, they really are. If uh, if they're running out of chances and they're running out of them fast. At the end of the day, the only person they can blame is themselves there. Having that many runners left on base, there's no way you can win games like that. They definitely had the Hawks on the ropes earlier on in this game. Including in the last inning when they had runners at first and third and nobody out. And were unable to score. Braden Taylor will remain in the game for the Humber Hawks on the mound. He has worked out of a number of jams, as we've mentioned, and now he finds himself leading the game 6-2. to two. It'll be the 9-1-2 hitters for Seneca here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Heath Gordon Moore will lead things off. He is one for two in the ball game. 
as Taylor's pitch hits him in the leg. Not what the Humber Hawks wanted to do there as Gordon Moore goes down, hit by the pitch, and the leadoff batter is on on the first pitch. And that turns the lineup over to Gabe Bourgeois. He is the center fielder. He is one for three in the ball game. Singled in the fourth. Best hitter of the year for Seneca this year. And we're going to see a mound visit. Maybe we're going to see a pitching change here as uh, Braden Taylor valiantly uh, got through into the sixth inning here. And uh, whether it's... Well, it looks like he is coming out. Yep, they're going to take him out. So Taylor is done. Gets a round of applause from the Humber supporters here at Kinsman Stadium. And he leaves the game with a 6-2 to two lead. He just hit, though, the first batter of the sixth inning in Heath Gordon Moore. And that will that'll change things up here as uh, Humber has to tap into its bullpen again. They've had to use a lot of pitchers throughout the tournament. And Seneca, if they can get some hits, still have a chance. Yeah, they still uh, they do absolutely, Brian. It's it's you're trying to figure out here, really how much they have behind uh, this guy here. They have, <laughs> I don't think they really have anything left, or certainly nothing fresh at this point. We will see, Maxim Skoropadsky come on to the game, and uh, he is a first year pitcher for Humber, made two appearances during the season, but only pitched two innings. Struck out three, walked two, pitched to an earned run average of seven. He gave up five runs in those two innings. The left-hander coming up in a big situation here for his team. He does have a four-run lead to work with here in the sixth inning. My Santa, sorry, uh, Jake, go ahead. I said, my question so far is, why is this guy pitching from the full? There's a runner on. I don't think anyone has uh, informed him of this. So he gets his warm-ups warm in, Skoropadsky, as Seneca looks to regroup here after surrendering four runs in the top of this inning to fall behind 6-2. to two. They do have the leadoff runner on, though, after Heath Gordon Moore was hit by a pitch. They'll be looking for some more base runners as the heart of the Seneca order comes up. And a 6-2 lead. The winner of this game, by the way, will advance to play the St. Clair Saints this afternoon in the gold medal matchup. The winner of this game will have to defeat St. Clair twice, though, to win the gold medal. It's a double knockout tournament. The St. Clair Saints have not lost a game yet, so... They do have a mulligan if things do not work out for them in the first game this afternoon. If St. Clair was to lose the early afternoon game, there would be then a sudden death game to follow it later in the afternoon. The Seneca Sting hoping to be in that game. They led this game 2-1 after four innings. But Humber tied it with one in the fifth and four runs in the top of the sixth inning. Sunshine out here at Kinsman Stadium and certainly a lot more comfortable conditions to play in as it uh, was last night as the temperature dropped well below three or four degrees. It was a very cold night for all the players last night. Just checking the temperature is now eight degrees. So that's a lot better than it was last, yes, last night. So good playing conditions here and probably the best you can hope for in late October. So we are about ready to go here again now. Reset things for you. Bottom of the sixth inning. Seneca is the home team. They have the red sleeves, the black jerseys with the red sleeves. They trail at 6-2. Nobody out here in the bottom of the six and a runner at first. Skoropadsky is ready to go. And the batter is Gabe Bourgeois. He looks at strike one. Bourgeois is one for three in the game with a single. But as mentioned, hit 400 during the regular season and was Seneca's top hitter. 
the lefty is ready with the 0-1. Bourgeois pops it up, foul out of play, strike one. As mentioned, Seneca has stranded nine base runners so far in this game. They've had their opportunities and looking to build another one here. Humber six, Seneca two. Bourgeois at the plate. Here's the here's the pitch. Fouled. And that's strike two. Off the strikes, I love it. Bourgeois looking to get on base for Logan Isaacs, who's on deck. Skorpaski shakes off the first signal. Now he's ready. Chewing his gum out there. Pitch is low and in the dirt. Scoreboard says a count of one and two. Bourgeois, the right-handed hitter, is ready. Here comes the pitch. It is check swing. Did he go around? He did not oh. go around. Wow, very, very tough call for the Humber Hawks there. He checked his swing. I guess he brought it back just in time, but that was really close. Wow, I thought he did there. We have a pretty good view of it from the side here. <laughs> it looked like he completely went. Maybe a bit of a break there for Seneca. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Count is two and two to Gabe Bourgeois. Nobody out here in the sixth inning. Pitch is swung on and missed, strike three. Huge strikeout there for Skorpadsky. One away. Absolutely huge. Maybe getting robbed there on the pitch before it comes back, blows it by him. The batter will be Isaacs. He is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. The Seneca shortstop bats from the left side. There is a runner at first here for Seneca with one out. But the Seneca Sting trail this game 6 to 2. They are the home team. Now we're ready to go. Skorpatsky is ready, the lefty deals. Swung on a miss, strike one. And a nice block there by the catcher. 0-1. That, that pitch just fell right off the table on Isaacs. Yeah, it really did. Started out low and away, and then just that last minute just bit right down to the ground. So it'll be an 0-1. It is lifted to center field. Steven now Rebecca is right under it. He didn't even have to really even move a step. No. The ball came right to him, and he gets it for the second out, two away. Yeah, no, it really did. It, it didn't even uh, camped under it. Had a fire, had a nap, then made the catch. So that brings up Jordan Blake, third baseman for Seneca. He is two for three in the ball game with a double and a single and a run scored. Runner at first here now, two out for Seneca in the bottom of the sixth. They trail by four as Blake looks at strike one from Skorpatsky. And Skorpatsky looks, looks like he means business here. He's come on and he's, he's, he's been hitting the strike zone. Yeah, he's been doing a great job so far coming out of the pen. It'll be an 0-1. High. One ball and one strike to Jordan Blake. Seneca looking to mount a comeback here. They trail at 6-2. Here's the 1-1, and it is fouled. Out of play, and it goes to 1-2. and two. Big pitch coming up here. Sport Patsky is ready. Here's the one two. It is fouled away again. I'm 
Blake looking to extend the inning here for Seneca. Looking for a rally, trying to answer with something here after Humber scored four in the top of this inning to go ahead six to two. The one-two pitch is swung on and missed. It was ticked, but it is caught by Tyrus Bath. The inning is over. So Seneca unable to score here in the sixth inning. And we have now played six complete. It is Humber six and Seneca two. So the Seneca Sting, Jake, strand another base runner, albeit not in scoring position that time, but they have stranded 10 base runners through six innings in this game. We saw yesterday against the Durham Lords, Seneca stranded 13 runners in that game against Durham. And, you know, over two games, you strand 23 runners on base. You, you know you had your opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Again, you just have no one else to blame but yourself. It's... Uh I guess looking back on it, maybe a little more small ball is in order. Like, just do something. You start with the basics. Just try and get something going. Induce a fly ball to get some runners in. Bunt, squeeze play, whatever you got to do. But I'll tell you, Seneca's had a hell of a time trying to score some runs. The difference in this ball game right now is the, the sixth inning for the Humber Hawks. They came up with the game tied at two. And then the heart of the order came through. Aiden Murphy let off with a single. Jacob Turner singled. The big blow in that inning was a two-run double by Tyrus Bath, the catcher. That put Humber up at the time, 4-2. to two. They ended up bringing home two more runs during the inning to go up 6-2. to two. Ethan Hagparast-Rad will stay on the mound for Seneca to pitch the seventh inning. And he will again see the four, five, six hitters come up here for Humber. Aiden Murphy will lead it off. He is two for three in the ball game with two singles and a run scored. First pitch is taken for a ball, or sorry, a strike, 0-1. Aiden Murphy, one of the veterans on this Humber team. As he looks at ball one, the Humber Hawks looking to keep alive their hopes for a third consecutive OCAA championship. If they win this game, they will get that shot against the St. Clair Saints this afternoon. Seneca has other plans still, and now the batter is hit with the pitch. As Murphy goes down to first base, and he is on base for the third time in four appearances this afternoon. Sometimes experience counts for a lot in a situation like to this, Jake. You know, Humber has a number of players that are, are back from their championship teams. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Experience in something like this is tr truly key because when you get into a situation like this, the nerves are not as bad. You know what's going on. You know the format. And I'll tell you, when you know what's going on, it makes it so much easier. That ball is hit on the ground to short. Might be a chance for a double play. They get the runner at second. And safe at first is Jacob Turner. So it's a fielder's choice for Turner. Murphy is retired. Six to four. One away. So Boato comes up now for Humber with a runner at first, one away. He is 0 for 2 in the ball game. He has struck out, he has flied out, he has walked and scored. That walk though was a big one as they check the runner back to first base. He was, that, that walk was a big part of the sequence in the four run six inning for the Humber Hawks. It followed the or came just before Tyrus's, Tyrus Bath's two-run double. He looks at a strike. 
Boato walked to load the bases. And then Bath followed with that two-run double to put Humber in front. It is now 6-2. We are in the top of the seventh inning. Seneca will get one more chance on the sticks as the home team in this ballgame as they check the runner again back. They certainly don't want to give up anything more here. Four runs. It's hard to come back from four runs, but you don't want to make the mountain any higher. Exactly, yeah. Four runs is still, you know, you got a chance. Anything more than that, you're really pushing the limit. Runner goes, swung on and missed for the strike. The throw down to second, not in time. And staying on the bag there is Jacob Turner with a stolen base. That's his second stolen base of the ball game. The count is 0-2, though, to David Boato. Runner in scoring position here for Humber with one away, top of the seventh, looking to add on to a 6-2 lead. Winner of this game will face the St. Clair Saints this afternoon for the gold medal. Ball is on the ground, foul, and will stay foul. Count remains 0-2. the final day of the OCWA men's baseball season, championship day. This is the bronze medal game. Pitch is fouled away again to the right side. It'll remain 0-2. He keeps just hitting it off the end of his bat. It just needs to start a little bit later. One away here in the top of the seventh for the Humber Hawks. Runner at second is Jacob Turner. The batter is David Boato. The 0-2 outside. Very fast-paced first four innings has really started to slow down here in the ball game. As the pitch is lifted to left center field, could be trouble if he reaches Robert Champion. And there it is, ball four. So a second base runner here for the Hawks in the top of the seventh inning. That'll bring up Robert Champion. And we're going to see a mound visit here as the uh, Seneca Sting trail this game 6-2. to two, And they will have one more chance on the offense in the bottom of this inning. But uh, now facing a threat and not wanting to give up anything more here in the top of the, half of the seventh. Yeah, totally right. It's, it's already a pretty hard mound to climb, especially with uh, the defense and the pitching on the mound for Humber. But, hey, you know what? It's baseball. There's always a chance. So the words have been shared. And we will get back to the action in just a moment. Again, mentioned the Robert uh, Champion is the batter. He is one for three in the ball game. He also hit a double in that four run, six inning for the Hawks. He has struck out twice also in the game. He looks at strike one at the knees, 0-1. Jacob Turner is the runner at second for Humber, and Tyrus Bath is at first base. He just reached on a walk. Count is 0-1 to Robert Champion. He swings and fouls that to the right side, 0-2. Seneca with runs in the first and the fifth, and then a big four spot in the sixth inning to lead 6-2. Looking for more here in the seventh. Hagparas Rad is ready. He throws it in there. Strike three taken. And the inning is over. And a big strikeout there for the Sting as they douse the flames and add, uh, put, give, maybe give themselves just a little bit of a boost 
and some momentum as they go into the seventh inning. Last chance for Seneca as they trail at 6-2. to two. Yeah, you know what? I think this is uh, big momentum and a big confidence boost going into it. They still got, like I said, big mountain to climb, but they can do it. So for Humber, no runs, no hits. There was a hit batter, there was a walk. And the Hawks strand two. Six and a half complete. It is the Hawks looking to hang on here for a chance to face the St. Clair Saints again this afternoon for the OCAA gold medal. Humber trying to get back to the top of the mountain. They were the champions in 2018 and 2019. They are the two-time defending champions. The St. Clair Saints, who will play this afternoon against the winner of this game, won five consecutive OCAA championships between 2013 and 2017. So the Saints are looking to bring home the championship banner back to Windsor for the first time in four years this afternoon. They will face the winner of this game. And the we expect that the first game will begin about half an hour, maybe a little bit later after the completion of this game. So we'll uh, usually get an announcement of the time of the start of the next game after it. This game started at 10 o'clock. It is now almost 12.30, so we would expect that the, uh, the gold medal game is not going to start till sometime after 1 o'clock and probably closer to 1.30. So the seventh inning for the Sting here, it'll be the four, five, and six hitters led by A.J. Rowe, Ethan Farrell, and Melvin Pujols. And they will try and rally against Maxim Skoropadsky, who came on in relief of Braden Taylor. Can they do it? Down four in the seventh inning. A.J. Rowe comes to the plate. He is unofficially 0 for 3 in the ball game. He's been on base twice. Each time on an error, hitting a ball to third and the ball bouncing at first base for Humber. So uh, he is, he's been on base twice. He is the cleanup hitter, the Seneca first baseman. Skorpatsky is ready, here we go. At first pitch is grounded, up the middle, it's a base hit. A.J. Rowe gets on, the leadoff runner is on for Seneca here in the bottom of the seventh. That'll bring up the designated hitter, Evan Farrell. He's two for three in the game with a double and a single. Lots of noise on the Seneca bench here as they hope they can turn the tables here on the Humber Hawks in the bottom of the seventh inning. Runner at first, nobody out. Here's the pitch to Farrell, it is high, ball one. Seneca's not wanting to give any outs away at this point. They need everything they can get to surmount this lead. As mentioned, Farrell doubled in the first. He singled in the fifth. Here's the 1-0. Swung on and missed. Strike one. That pitch was up in the letters, maybe up almost around his neck, and uh, tried to crush it. Helping score a out there a little bit, the pitcher. One and one. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and he lays off of that one. Two balls and a strike. A.J. Rowe is the runner at first for Seneca. They are in the black jerseys with the red sleeves. They trail this game 6-2, to two, bottom of the seventh inning. Last chance in this bronze medal game. 2-1 is the pitch, and it is swung on a miss for strike two. Again, swinging out of his shoes there. He needs to really just simplify things. Break it down. He just needs to get on base. Skorpatsky came on in the sixth inning and struck out two. That ball is lifted to right field and looks to be playable just inside the foul line. It is caught by Robert Champion for the first out of the inning, one away. 
Rowe has to go back to first. And now the Hawks are two outs away from advancing to the gold medal matchup with St. Clair. The batter will be Melvin Pujols, the second baseman. He is one for three in the ball game. He is grounded out, he is singled, and he is struck out. Seneca with a runner at first, one away here. They are down four, and he will look at strike one from Maxim Skoropadsky. Sting looking for base runners, any way they can get them. Skoropadsky trying to shut down Seneca. The 0-1 is fouled away right at us here in the, in, the, in the booth. You know, you can't see it from the screen, but that ball came to the right side and hit right in front of us, Jake. I know you had me covered, though. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, thank you. Count is 0-2 to Melvin Pujols. Swings and misses at a pitch high in the zone for strike three. There are two out. Pujols comes to the bench, shaking his head. He went after a hard pitch. It was, uh, had a lot of pop on it. Two away. It'll be Sean Sahi, a pinch hitter here for Seneca. He will bat for Eric Baker. Two away, one on. Humber leading it six to two. Sean Sahai, correction, is the pinch hitter. Left-handed hitter. Appeared in six games this year for Seneca. Batted 300, trying to keep the game alive. And he will look at a ball go off the catcher's mitt. That will allow Rowe to trot, trot down to second on the wild pitch. He moves into scoring position. But again, Seneca is down four runs here. Yeah, they, that, that run really means nothing out there at second base. One-0 pitch coming to Sahai here. Skoropatsky is ready, and it is low, and the same thing happens. It gets away from the catcher, and Rowe comes down to third on another wild pitch. I'm not even really sure what happened. It looked like uh, the catcher, Tyrus, had a, had that. They just skipped right by. That's true. Could officially be scored a pass ball. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying wild pitch, but it might, might be a pass ball. We'll see what the official scorer has to say on it. Yeah, no, I think it's still a pass ball, yeah. Big cut from Sahai, he misses it. Two balls and one strike. Talking about the golden, I think we spoke about last night is that it's a heck of a lot cold, uh, clo pardon me, harder to close the mitt in cold conditions and it's uh, the reaction time's a little bit slower. Count is two and one to Sahai. Two out here, Humber looking to close things off and there's another strike taken. Two balls and two strikes. And the Stinger down to their final strike. They do have a runner at third. A.J. Rowe reached to lead off this inning with a single. He has moved to third on a couple of wild pitches or pass balls. But it's still a four-run lead for Humber. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fouled. Sahai stays alive. You heard Maxim grunt there as he threw that one in. Everything going into pouring into this last batter. So we'll do it again. Count is two balls and two strikes. Sahai trying to keep Seneca alive here in the seventh inning. The pitch is hit to the shortstop. And they will throw it on to first to record the out. The game is over as David Boato makes the play and throws over to first to retire Sahai. And the Humber Hawks survive a big scare here this morning against the Seneca Sting. They win it 6-2 to two and they will face the St. Clair Saints for the gold medal this afternoon here at Kinsman Stadium. The Seneca Sting put up a valiant battle, but they will 
leave this, the field this afternoon as the OCAA bronze medalists. They received the bronze medal in this game. So the Humber Hawks will take a bit of time. We don't know what they're going to have left from a pitching standpoint to face the St. Clair Saints this afternoon, but the Humber Hawks will get that chance to repeat as OCAA champions. They'll have to beat St. Clair twice. Jake, uh, for Seneca, again, after yesterday's, they gave up 18 runs yesterday. This was a terrific performance, and they almost pulled it out. Uh, they just couldn't execute at critical times offensively. Yeah, again, you're going to, I mean, I think the coach and the team is going to kind of go for the box score later on, and they're going to see just a significant amount of runners left on base. They probably already know it as is, but uh, truly, like, you know, if uh, Seneca was able to just do a little bit better on the clutch hitting side, we probably would have a totally different ball game here. They did strand 11 runners throughout the course of the ball game, so they did have their chances, and uh, you, I think you look back to the, the fifth inning when the game was tied at that point, 2-2, and Seneca had runners at the corners, first and third with nobody out, and they were not able to score. But it is a, a great season for the Seneca Sting. Uh, they are on the podium for the first time in the program history. It was a great season for Seneca. They finished 9-3. and three. They finished first place in the OCAA East Division and uh, earned a bye out th through the quarterfinals in this tournament. And uh, by finishing in first place, uh, also captured the Coach of the Year honors for Matthew Naylor, the head coach of Seneca. So it was really... Um, a year that they can look back on with a lot of pride and also look back on as a building step to future successes. So the player of the game for Seneca is Jordan Blake, the third baseman. And he had a couple of hits in that ball game, a double and a single. And Braden Taylor is the pitcher, uh, starting pitcher, came on under huge pressure in this game for Humber to try and keep his team alive and a chance for a three-peat. And Taylor went deep into the ball game, briefly trailed it, but held his team there, working out of a number of jams, and uh, kept Seneca at bay when he needed to the most. So Braden Taylor is the player of the game for Humber. And we were just learning that Evan Farrell is named an OCAA All-Star for this tournament. And uh, Farrell, Jake, you've mentioned Farrell uh, was the designated hitter for Seneca, really had the hot bat for, for Seneca and uh, was, a, was, a, was a big part of their success this weekend. Yeah, he did. He, uh, he caught barrels almost every single time went up to the plate. Had great plate discipline, did a really good job uh, overall this year. So they are going to hand out here at the at home plate. You can see the OCAA medals table, and the bronze medals will be presented to the Seneca Sting. And this is the this is a, a big milestone for the Seneca program. The first medal. They were in the Final Four tournament two years ago, but uh, were not able to reach the the top three. They finished fourth in 2019, but this time they will leave with the bronze medal and uh, a big milestone for the Seneca program. So congratulations to all of the players, members of the coaching staff of the Sting as they reach uh, an important mark for the program. So the bronze medals are handed out and... Uh, we will allow that to complete here before we sign off. But again, the Humber Hawks on the third baseline are watching the medals handed out, and they will be hoping to be getting gold medals this afternoon as they face off against the, Sa the St. Clair Saints in the championship round. St. Clair, though, has not lost yet, and it's a double knockout tournament. So for Humber to win the championship, they are going to have to defeat St. Clair in two consecutive games this afternoon. If St. Clair wins the first game, they are the champions. If Humber wins the next game, then that would force a deciding game later this afternoon. You can see in the far part of the uh, 
the field here at Kinsman Stadium. The St. Clair Saints are down uh, in, the, in the right field and warming up for the next game. So we will have that for you in a short time. We'll just let the medal presentations end here. Final thoughts, Jake, on uh, on this game. Uh, you know, on paper, it looked like it was a real tall order for the Seneca Sting, but they did themselves proud here, and uh, they, they were 2-2 after five innings, and uh, with a couple of breaks, might have been able to pull this one out. Yeah, listen, Brian, like, you know what? It's uh, as, as critical as we are, as, like, we're analyzing, you know, game by game and as well as the tournament. First time for the program to even uh, and crack the top three. That's fantastic. That's a huge achievement for them, and, like, they've done themselves, their families, and as well, like, their school proud. It's OCAA. It's a very tough division with a number of very strong teams. And uh, you know what? You know what? Hey, you know what? It's not a gold. And, uh, you know, you're not the best in the province. But this is this is a huge uh, stepping stone. Great work overall. So the Seneca Sting will uh, take this bronze medal home and look for bigger and better things as the future holds. Uh, looking to the 2022 season, we'll see how many of their players come back and uh, they will try and build on what is a, a great achievement for them. The bronze medalists, the Seneca Sting. Final score in ball game again, Humber Hawks six, the Seneca Sting two. Humber advancing to the gold medal matchup against St. Clair. That will start this afternoon, and I'm going to guess at, uh, it could be around will be sometime between 1.15 and 1.30. We haven't had an official announcement on it yet, but uh, they will want to allow the Humber Hawks to get a little bit of nutrition in between the two games as they prepare for the gold medal matchup against St. Clair. So again, the final score, Humber 6, Seneca 2. For Jacob Ebbs, I'm Brian Oliver. Thanks for joining us on the live stream. We'll see you again.